Titans have been meeting on the gridiron since 1897. Over the years, they have staged some of the most memorable games in the history of college football. For instance, the 1950 Snow Bowl, a game Michigan won 9-3 in a blinding blizzard. The victory sent the Wolverines to sunny California and the Rose Bowl. 1973, both teams undefeated. This slugfest would end in a 10-10 tie. The Big Ten athletic directors vote to send OSU West. The Wolverines stay home, adding fuel to the fire. Will anyone forget the 1979 game, Earl Bruce's first year at the helm? The Buckeyes, undefeated, capitalize on this blocked punt for a touchdown and beat Michigan 18-15. Pasadena, their prize. The Ohio State-Michigan game is still the one the fans, the coaches, and the players point to, be it for the Rose Bowl, the Big Ten Championship, or just bragging rights. The Ohio State-Michigan game is still the one. Still the One is being brought to you by Ford and your Greater Columbus Ford dealers, by your friends at Kroger, and by Durthaler Keyboards, Lowry, America's number one selling home organ at Rogers Church Organs. spirit this holiday season anything that could happen did happen both ohio state and michigan had their share of ups and downs but not to break tradition once again the ohio state michigan game is for all the marbles plain and simple if ohio state wins they go to the rose bowl let's go back in time and see how both team seasons unfolded september 8th ohio state opens up its season at home against oregon state the Buckeyes get off to somewhat of a slow start against the scrappy Beaver team, but are able to hold on and come away with a victory 22-14. Meanwhile, up in Ann Arbor, the Wolverines open their season against powerful Miami of Florida. Michigan pulls off the upset, beating Miami 22-14. Week two, the Buckeyes at home against Washington State. Ohio State made up for its slow start, blowing out the Cougars 44-0. Up in Ann Arbor, there were not a lot of happy faces as Washington came in and beat Michigan 20-11. Week 3, September 22nd, Ohio State opens up Big Ten play as Iowa enters the Buckeyes' den. OSU puts everything together, beating the Hawkeyes 45-26. Michigan also opened up Big Ten play, entertaining Wisconsin. The Wolverines made up for the previous week's loss, beating the Badgers 20-14. The fourth week, and Ohio State goes on the road for the first time, heading up to Minnesota. The Gophers come out ready to play, but it's the Buckeyes who come away with the victory, winning 35-22. The Wolverines also took to the road, heading to Bloomington to take on Indiana. The Hoosiers were thinking upset, but Michigan was able to hold on and win 14-6. October 6th, OSU heads to Purdue with the number two ranking in the country. But on this dreary day, turnovers kill the Buckeyes. As they are upset by the Boilermakers 28 to 23. Things weren't any better up in Ann Arbor as the Wolverines were handed their second loss of the season. Interstate rival Michigan State doing the number. The final, the Spartans 19, Michigan 7. October 13th, homecoming in Columbus. Last year's Big Ten champs, Illinois, the team to beat. The Illini jumped to a 24 to nothing lead in the first quarter and things didn't look good for the Buckeyes. But Ohio State staged one of the greatest come from behind victories in the history of Ohio Stadium to beat Illinois 45 to 38. In Ann Arbor, the Wolverines had revenge in mind and they took it out on Northwestern. Michigan gives the Wildcats no respect, beating them 31 to zero. Week seven, OSU on the road as they head to Michigan State. The Spartans, who had already upset Michigan, gave the Buckeyes all they could handle. But a missed field goal by Michigan State with seconds left in the game give the Buckeyes the win, 23 to 20. 
On this day, the Buckeyes flirted with disaster, but Michigan lived it. On the road in Iowa, the Hawkeyes shut out the Wolverines for the first time since 1977. The final, 26 to zero. October 27th, Ohio State heads to Wisconsin. The Buckeyes were greeted by rain and turnovers as they lose their second game of the season, 16 to 14. And in Arbor, it was a different story as Michigan took on Illinois. The Wolverines put things together, beating the Fighting Illini 26 to 18. November 3rd, the Buckeyes, still hot about the loss in Wisconsin, take out their frustration on Indiana as they totally annihilate the Hoosiers 50 to 7. Meanwhile, Michigan on the road in Purdue, the Wolverines spot the Boilermakers a 24-point lead. But Michigan tries for the comeback, scoring 22 points in the fourth quarter, but it's too little, too late, as they lose their fourth game of the season, 31 to 29. November 12th, the Buckeyes head to Evanston, Illinois to take on Northwestern. OSU was greeted by cold, windy weather, but it didn't bother them much as they completely blow out the Wildcats, 52 to three. Meanwhile, Michigan beat Minnesota 31 to seven. But the big story was what took place elsewhere in the Big Ten. Wisconsin beat Purdue, and in Iowa City, Michigan State took on Iowa. Iowa quarterback Chuck Long has stopped here six inches from the goal line on a two-point conversion, giving the Spartans the upset victory 17 to 16, thus setting up the big showdown in Ohio Stadium. The kid that made that tackle on the two-point play, I'd like to kiss him. <laughs> well, I think the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry means to me is the uh, it's the essence of what college football is about, the tradition, the history, uh, the, the fans. Uh, it cannot be beaten in the United States. Michigan is the most intense rivalry that I've ever participated in, and it was always a joy to be in that kind of competition. Attention color players. All of these have helped to make the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry what it is today. Books have been written on this game, but all you really need to do is talk to the people who have been involved with it. The, the fact that we look forward to Michigan as that last game season has made our seasons for years because competitors make you what you are. And that's been so true of that game because we have that game to look forward to every year. And this year is no exception. It's the same thing. Here we are going right down to the wire in that ball game. And uh, it'll determine just about everything for us. And it doesn't make too much difference. I know we had a bad team one of her years we went up there, and we'd all gone near beat them. They were very lucky on, a, uh, on an official decision that uh, uh, helped us to lose the ball game. But it was a tight ball game, and we didn't have that good a team that year compared to theirs. But uh, it's always an enormous contest between two great universities. Back in 1971, when you were just a kid, um, we had an undefeated team. We were one of the top teams in the country. I remember Woody came in here. I'm not sure his record. I'm thinking something like 5-4, something like that, and uh, had no business playing against us and staying with us. Uh, Campana returned a punt 90 yards for a touchdown. They took the lead 7-3. Uh, and that, uh, their defense played uh, tremendous. We moved the ball up and down the field, but we couldn't score. And it wasn't until a couple of minutes left that we finally uh, scored from 20 yards out to win the game, 10 to seven. And, uh, but that, uh, that uh, I, I keep remembering that game because that's probably of the games that I've been involved with. That's the one where the two teams were not evenly matched. We were a far superior team than they were, but we weren't that day. And uh, we were three points better that day and lucky to get it at the end of the game. So anything can happen in that uh, ball game. It's the biggest game of the season uh, for Ohio State. Uh, great rivalry. Uh, I always enjoyed the Michigan game because it was fierce competition. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I remember that every time I would play a Michigan game, I could hardly walk after the game. I mean, the hitting was just that hard, and, and it was just that tough competition that uh, I enjoyed being a part of. You've got to get psyched up for every game, but something about that Michigan game that stands out, that uh, makes you want to play harder if that's possible, and, uh, and you do. 
for some reason. Uh, that that uh, competition, that rivalry, that tradition, uh, it, it makes you play as hard as you could possibly play. And I'll tell you what, I was always glad it was the last game of the season because after some of those games, I didn't know if I'd be able to come back the next week. Having the pride and prestige of, uh, of winning those games, I think, carries a lot of weight throughout the state. Uh, a lot of other Michigan teams, even like when Denny Franklin uh, was a quarterback here, he's known as one of the top quarterbacks in Michigan history, but a lot of people still remember that he didn't beat Ohio State. I think he lost two and tied one, uh, which is a heck of a thing to put on a guy. I think in Denny's career, he was 30 wins, two losses, and one tie here, and his two losses and the one tie was to Ohio State. And, uh, you know, it's just all the people in this state, uh, especially over the years, maybe not so much this year because the teams aren't doing as well as they have in the past, but every year is what did you do against Ohio State, and that was the name of that season. But as far as the rivalry and uh, the intensity, uh, the drama that goes into this game, all the fans' excitement, uh, nothing will ever change in this because there's no question... Uh, it might have changed a little bit since uh, Woody's left Ohio State, but people still remember the great games between Michigan and Ohio State, and it's still one of the great, greatest rivalries going in the country. You can just turn the pages back to 1950. We were by far the better team in 1950, and we lost the ball game 9 to 3. So uh, between Ohio State and Michigan, anything can happen. And I'd just like to say one thing I'm one of the few people that played against Michigan for three years and never beat them. We tied them 7 to 7 in 49. We got beat 9 to 3 in the Snow Bowl, and we lost here in Columbus uh, 7 to nothing my senior year. So uh, I have a lot of respect for Michigan. Even if it doesn't uh, have uh, the thrill and, uh, and the grandeur of the, uh, the Rose Bowl, I believe that uh, uh, nothing can take away the great tradition of the scarlet and gray and the maize and blue you know especially when you see them come out on the field the ohio state band and uh, do the scripto and the michigan band coming out on the field and doing that block m and they're marching up and down the field and the people are just rabid about uh, this this rivalry uh, that has existed over the past 70 years the the week before each of those michigan games uh, you obviously are going to class, but you're also worried about uh, the game and, and can you play as well as you can. The hype is totally different. The band comes out to practice. Uh, the senior tackle takes place. It's the last game of the year. Uh, it, it's really for everything. and uh, It's more than just the football game. It, it's everything leading up to it that gives you the emotion. And frankly, all those weeks are kind of blurs. Uh, Everything just kind of runs together, and pretty soon the game's there, and you're playing for all the marbles. Uh, if not for the trip to the Rose Bowl, you're playing for, uh, uh, you know, one's pride and the team's pride. I've never played in a game that has been that important, uh, that I liked to play in. The competitiveness was there, and uh, go blue. <laughs> There's only one game in America in college football. That's the Ohio State-Michigan game, and that's right here in the Ohio Stadium this coming Saturday. There's a mutual respect, and when these two teams meet this year, strategy will be the key, because you just never know what's going to happen. The games are always seem to be close, they always seem to be exciting, and they always seem to be determined by who makes uh, either the most mistakes or the least mistakes, because you, you can't afford uh, turnovers in this football game. For the Wolverines to win, they know they'll have to stop OSU's explosive offense. And in particular, big number 41, tailback Keith Byers. So far this season, Byers has carried the ball 286 times for 1,554 yards, scoring 19 touchdowns. In the receiving department, he's caught 34 passes for 422 yards, scoring two touchdowns. Byers leads the nation in rushing, scoring, and all-purpose running. All you got to do is say Michigan, and everybody around here just, you know, just seems like they get good-eyed and they're ready to go. Yeah, that's all you have to say is Michigan, and uh, no pep talk needed. Uh, you don't have to, you know, hang nothing around the, the locker room or nothing. We all know what it's about. And uh, yeah, that's it. this is the greatest, you know, college football rivalry that there is. He's probably right now the best running back in the country. Uh, um, and I think the thing about him that makes him great is that he's not just a runner. He's, uh, he can catch the football. I've seen him throw the football. 
he can do a lot of things but uh, he's a great football player there's you know it, it's it's tough to um, uh, you take a buyers and put him on any team I mean any team and that's going to make that team a pretty good ball club and you can't forget about OSU quarterback Mike Tomzak when he's on there's not many better in 10 games he's completed 110 passes out of 192 attempts for 1,523 yards resulting in nine touchdowns Tomzak was a question mark for this season because of a broken leg he suffered last spring but hard work paid off and he's come back like gangbusters coming to our stadium here we haven't lost all year in that stadium and it means a lot from my point of view because I'm a senior because I'm a captain it's my final three hours in that stadium and it's gonna be by far the best three hours I'll play in that stadium along with you know 15 other seniors will be the best three hours they play in that stadium and uh, you know that says it all right there if everybody puts their hours together and plays great will come on top he's a tremendous uh, quarterback and uh, his development has been phenomenal but he's got that uh, extra something that uh, the ability to lead the, the uh, knowing how to handle an offensive team um, I think he's uh, he's one of the great quarterbacks in our league right now offensively the Wolverines have struggled this year a lot of it has to do with their starting quarterback Jim Harbaugh being lost in the fifth game of the season against Michigan State but you win with defense in the Big Ten, and Michigan has a good one. They uh, have a very fine defensive football team, like all Michigan defenses, that keeps you out of the end zone, and that's the number one thing that they've been able to do through the years to be successful. So they have a good, solid defensive football team that uh, runs the ball and hits you. They have a really strong defense, and you know that's the part I'm concerned with. Uh, another defensive line is tough. They have a lot of good players, so we're going to have to really get ready because I know last year we didn't have the greatest game up there so we got a lot to, to pay back to those guys. They're strong defense and uh, they're going to do everything possible to stop Keith. We're going to have to open the ball up a little bit, put some balls in the air and you know get some touchdowns. Personally, the offensive line, we have a challenge because uh, we didn't uh, dominate the line of scrimmage last year the way we should have. You know, we didn't didn't play real well and uh, you know didn't, didn't play as well as we had in the past and as well as we played together as a unit this year and so uh, uh, we're going to be working extra hard, you know, because we have something to prove from last year. If we do the things that we can do, it doesn't matter what they do. If we play well, it doesn't matter what kind of defense they throw at us, we'll still play well. That, we have, Coach Mason always says, you know, if we block harder than they shed, if, if we run harder than they tackle, we'll win the game. It still comes down to that. No secrets, no tricks you can use to, to win a game. We've just got to play harder than they do. On paper, Ohio State is a much superior team. The Buckeyes lead in just about every category. The only problem is that the game isn't played on paper. This is a game that you've got to go out and perform. You, you don't win this game by, uh, by the statistics. Uh, you've got to forget past performance and go with what you do on Saturday. Uh, when Ohio State Michigan, when they get together, you just throw all the statistics out the window, you throw the records out the window, you throw it all out the window and uh, just start from scratch. And uh, they're going to play uh, excellent football. You know, when, uh, no matter who they, what they've done against the other opponents, they're going to come out and play to the best. They're going to play the game of their lives this uh, week, too. And uh, just like ourselves, and just going to be able to make the best team win. You could throw it all out the window, and you could do it, you know, over the number of years prior to this, because any time you come down to Ohio State Michigan game, it really doesn't matter who's on top or who's at the bottom. Guys play above their capabilities during this game because of tradition, because of the hype, because the coaches get everybody so pumped up. And, uh, you know, it's like starting all over again. You know, everybody's 0-0, zero zero. both teams are 10-0. And, 10 and, and uh, whoever wins this game will have the bragging rights for another year. You're going into a final game of the year, and, and uh, you're going to sell out. And, uh, you know, you may do some things differently, you may not. Um, but uh, any time you play any team, uh, regardless of uh, how they're matched, and you play for 60 minutes, anything can happen. Emotions play such a big part in this game. It's the tradition, the rivalry, the pageantry, and this year it's for the Big Ten Championship and a trip to Pasadena. It's the essence of competition. It's what the players have been dreaming about because the Ohio State-Michigan game is still the one. We feel we have to let everyone know that we deserve to be in the Rose Bowl. We deserve to be Big Ten champs, so we're going to go out and prove it. Michigan is trying to salvage a season. We're trying to go to the Rose Bowl. I think that our goal is a little bit more important than theirs. Frankly, I don't care if they salvage a season or not. Um, we're going to win. Uh, I, 
that may be a bit candid, but we, we've got more at stake. We've finally got the wheel of the driving seat again. Uh, we control our own destiny. Uh, I don't think that we'll mess up again this time. It was nice to have it before. We lost it. We got it back. And this time I think we'll be all right. I was younger growing up. I've seen a lot of Ohio State teams come down and play in Michigan for the, for the Big Ten, for the Roses and everything. And uh, I'm just happy to be associated. I have a chance to do that too. And uh, I would like to come out victorious like some of the other teams I watched in the past come out. Definitely we have something to prove. Uh, you know, it's not going to be no easy road, especially with Michigan, because, you know, they haven't, haven't had such a good year for, you know, Michigan. But still, you know, they're going to be fired up for us. And, you know, we have to take it to them this week. It's a game that I've uh, dreamed about playing in, uh, playing for the Big Ten Championship, you know, going to Rose Bowl. I've seen other Ohio State teams do it uh, in the past. I've uh, just always wanted to do it. It's, it's going to be the uh, highlight of my career. I know that. We'll be pumped up. You know, we're giving a second chance, and that says it all right there. And uh, the senior group has never been to the Rose Bowl. You know, it's just a great feeling to know that you have the chance to go to the Rose Bowl. And with Michigan in our way, you know, ain't no stopping us now. Still the one has been brought to you by your friends at Kroger. By Dirt Aider Keyboards, Lowry, America's number one selling home organ, and Rogers Church Organs. And by Ford and your Greater Columbus Ford dealers. Local high school promotion. Looks just fine. Call now for free estimate. Take it out of here, you pop it in here. Football report on this, a Saturday of collegiate classics. A day of traditional rivalries from coast to coast, from Yale and Harvard in the east to Cal and Stanford in the west. And here in the heart of the Big Ten, Ohio Stadium will be filled to capacity and perhaps beyond as Bo Schembechler's Wolverines square off against Keith Byers and the Buckeyes in a game you'll see here on CBS in just a few minutes. All week long in Columbus, the subject was roses if Ohio, with Michigan and Ohio State. And we'll join Brent Musburger and Eric Parsegan in Columbus after these words from your local stations. Dusty Rhodes had been the world. Michigan's key player is sophomore quarterback Chris Zerbrug. His ball control offense and Jim Beckler's hard-hitting aggressive defense must throttle the Buckeyes' sensational offensive attack. The Bucks are led by senior quarterback Mike Tomzak. And he will feature the nation's premier running back, Big Keith Byers. Sports presents College Football. Live from Ohio Stadium in Columbus, Ohio, it's the Michigan Wolverines versus the Ohio State Buckeyes. Today's game is sponsored by the new Chrysler Corporation. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. Olympic gold and silver coins from the U.S. Treasury, the holiday gift of lasting value. 
and by AC Delco, the smart parts. It is mid-November, and the weather has come up pure October for Michigan against Ohio State. The storyline today is quite dramatic. If the Buckeyes win, they go to the Rose Bowl because of Michigan State's defense against Iowa's attempt for a two-point conversion. The Hawkeyes had just scored to pull within a point. Time was running out. Chuck Long of the Hawks would keep the ball. First, he would be hit by linebacker Jim Morrissey. Then Sean Bullock would clean up on the play, and the Iowa would come up a point short. Now, if the Buckeyes beat their arch-rival Michigan, they will go to Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. 90,000 fans on hand. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brett Musburger. The autumns pass ever so quickly. The 81st meeting between these two great universities, and it means just as much as it did way back in 1919. Now, the man who's working with me today, Era Parsegan, grew up in Akron, Ohio, and Era, I think you probably enjoyed these games as a young man. Well, I was born and raised in this state, as you all well know, and came to know the intensity of this rivalry when I was a youngster. We used to sit around the radio. We didn't have television in those days and listen to the Ohio State-Michigan game. And 42 years ago, I got to see my first Ohio State-Michigan game sitting in the last row in that upper deck, and I remember the thrill. Paul Brown was the coach here at Ohio State. Fritz Chrysler at Michigan. Ohio State won that game 21-7, to and if anything, in the last 42 years, the intensity has, uh, has intensified the rivalry and this is another big one and here come the Wolverines of Michigan Bo Schembechler and the school up north as they have always been referred to by Woody Hayes and here come the Buckeyes led by their coach Earl Bruce So it is Ohio State, and a win today sends them to Pasadena and an appearance against USC in the Rose Bowl. Area, if there's a criticism of this game through the years, it's too conservative, low scoring, don't do anything offensively. Now that's been the rap on the coaches, becoming ultra conservative in this game, waiting for the other guy to make the mistake and then capitalize on it. And of course, historically, these have been low scoring games. So I went to the record book, did a little research, and found that both teams in the last 15 years, Bo Schembechler, Woody Hayes for 10 years, Earl Bruce for five, have averaged less than two touchdowns. But look at the trend that has developed in the last two years. Michigan in the last two years has averaged 19 points, Ohio State 22.5. Let's see if that trend continues or they go back to the old low scoring close games. Era, you spoke to Schembechler frequently this week. How's he gonna play it? Well, he said he's gonna freewheel it. He has less to lose in this ball game, certainly than Earl Bruce. Bruce has got the Rose Bowl, the Big Ten Championship on the line. There's going to be more pressure on them. But this is a game that's going to be played with great, great intensity. It's going to be a fun game. I think the fans are going to enjoy it. And Bruce told us we're going back to the basics. That could mean Byers off right tackle, Byers off left tackle. But says Bruce, so what? He'll get me five or six yards of crack. We're going to come back. It's Michigan and Ohio State for the 81st time. It'll be on CBS in just a moment. Cans. Get Quaker State's pen here in Columbus, Ohio, and getting warmer by the minute. The wind will not be a factor in the horseshoe this afternoon. Partly cloudy, no rain or snow in the forecast. Michigan won the coin flip and elected to defer. That means they'll make their decision to start the second half. The Buckeyes of Ohio State will receive, so we will see Keith Byers in action here early in the game. Todd Schlopey, a barefooted kicker, will put it in play for Bo Schimbeckler and the Wolverines, number 99 there. And then, Era, we will see what kind of a defensive attack Schimbeckler and the Wolverine staff have come up to take on the number one running back in the country this fall. Well, they're ranked number two in the Big Ten Conference defensively, just behind Iowa. That's their strength. And Byers is back as one of the deep men. That is a bit of a surprise in this game. He has been nursing an injured ankle the last couple of weeks coming out of the Wisconsin game. He is back there with Woolridge. We'll see if Slopey tries to keep it away from him here. It's to Woolridge. Into the end zone. Bounces out for a touchback. 
And the Ohio State offense will feature these men on the attack now as they come to the ball. Their quarterback, he must have a consistent game today. The fullback, Barry Walker, good speed and power. And there he is, the nation's premier running back. 21 touchdowns. Lanise outside, smart and sure-handed. And then the great freshman receiver, Chris Carter. And their tight end, Ed Tiger. He's a blocker, not too much of a threat as a receiver. The Buckeyes need some output from that tight end position here today. There's the number one man tailback spot, Keith Byers. Play fake. Tom's out to throw on the first play of the game, and Byers is wide open. They weren't conservative on first down. Quite a surprise. Carlin Rivers coming over on the hit for Schimbeckler's defense. This really is a surprise. Came out throwing the ball. I'm sure that Michigan did not expect it. Tom Zack, Tom Zack throws the ball to Byers as he sneaks through after being faked to. Rivers comes in and makes the tackle. The element was a surprise right there, if anything. And a 13-yard gain and a first down for the Buckeyes. Ball up on the 33-yard line. Contact gives to the fullback, and that is Walker. And the Wolverines meet him quickly, led by linebacker Tim Anderson, one of their leading tacklers. Now that offensive line, Rory Graves improving. The next man right there, Jim Lachey, a first-rounder in the eyes of many scouts. Mags is starting for the injured Loudermill. Zelensky, very strong. And another all-star performer is Karowitz out of Toledo, Ohio. Tom Zach, the senior from Calumet City. Checking the defense. Pitch to Byers. Has the corner. First down. Run out at the 49-yard line. And Brad Cochran, number 30, the defensive corner man, got over on him. Brent, another surprise. The option play down the line. You saw Tom Zach deal the ball off, which was unexpected. Those two plays were unexpected by Michigan. The opening pass, and then, of course, this option play down to the left. Watch here as Tom Zach. Fakes the ball to the fullback, Walker deals the ball off right now. Good blocking out in front, and I don't think Michigan expected it. Two good offensive moves by Ohio State in this opening drive. And a 16-yard game. Ball put down at the 49. But guys, Tomzak keeping it, running to the left. Another surprise. And he gained a good eight yards and took on Garland Rivers, helmet to helmet. Well, Earl Bruce said yesterday at the uh, party we had last night that he was going to let Tom Zach run the ball. I thought he was kidding, but by golly, there he is on the keeper play. Up against this Michigan defense here this afternoon, these are the men who will try to slow him down. Deep Felice replaced the injured Hammerstein, but he started 11 games last year. Sensic could be their best lineman. And Brooks is quick and extremely aggressive. And Scarcelli works in there, too. Those are the men up front now for the Wolverines this afternoon. Myers pounds to the 40-yard line. And he'll have the first down. And some of the other members of the Wolverines, Tim Anderson, who's already made one tackle on them. And there's Mike Mallory. He is their leading tackler. And Rodney Lyles, he's a big play man on the outside. He'll drop back into pass coverage. Sometimes he'll blitz for Bo Schembechler, too. See Bo's concern right there. He knows the open drive has done some surprise things. And, and he's, he has the right to be concerned. As a result, the Buckeyes are going to have a first down on the Michigan 40, but there was movement over there on the left side of the line. Lynn like Rory Graves Lynn jumped Denver, down. Uh, University Hospital Intensive Care. Last year, Michigan upset Ohio State in Ann Arbor, and there was a big play in the fourth period of that game. It's called the Fumble Ruski. You might remember Nebraska. Dead ball. False start, offense. Nebraska used it successfully against Oklahoma four years ago, but when Ohio State tried it last year in the fourth quarter, it backfired, and Michigan recovered the fumble. Earl Bruce telling us yesterday there'll be no fumble ruski in this game. Now it's first and 15. Tom Zack to put it up. Watch Carter. Incomplete, underthrown. Carter was breaking between two men, and Ivan Hicks, 17, and Garland Rivers, 13, were there on the coverage. The defensive backfield for the mission. Garland Rivers, very versatile athlete. And their outstanding player, Brad Cochran, intercepted two passes against the Buckeyes a year ago. Ivan Hicks, he's Dwight Hicks' brother. Dwight, of course, plays with the 49ers. And that's Mike's younger brother, Doug Mowry, a very gutty performer this year. He has been slowed by injuries, but he just hangs in there for Schimbecker. Dino Dawson is in there for Tiger. There's a passing threat. Now they've got three good receivers in there. On 
On the second and 15 from the 45, Tom Zach play fakes it. Zips one incomplete. Threw in behind Dawson that time, Eric. Good response in there by the defense. They moved as the ball was in the air. Good ball reaction. Number 13 there, Garland Rivers. This has been a much more wide open attack by the Buckeyes than we expected. Really surprises me, and I'm sure it surprised the Michigan coaches. But you can see what happened with that one five yard penalty. Instead of having first and 10, it was first and 15. They've had to come up with two passes here. Now they're faced with a third and 15 situation. And that penalty could have blunted this drive. Let's see what happens. As a result, era, the Michigan secondary now can loosen up a little bit. Look for the pass play, and here it comes. They dump it out incomplete over the middle. They wanted Lanise that time. He was underthrown. They put tremendous pressure on Tom Zapp. Excellent defensive uh, work by the Michigan ball club, particularly in the secondary, where they reacted to the ball well. They have forced this punt situation, and they stopped that drive. But Ben, as I mentioned, that five-yard penalty, a little mistake like that, the very thing that Ohio State said they didn't want to make any mistakes, that mistake was costly. Now, here comes one of the most successful punting units in college football. The freshman Tom Tupa will put it up for Earl Bruce, and he gets sensational coverage out of this unit. Gilvani Johnson to return for the Wolverines. And they'll let that one go into the end zone. Tupa's strong leg takes it a little too far that time. Ball will come out. It was a 45-yard punt by Tupa, but it went further than he wanted. We're going to come back. Ohio State and Michigan are scoreless in Columbus. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. This flight doesn't get scrubbed. Rolling a good day for them. He has an excellent blocker in Eddie Garrett. They have switched tailbacks, however. Rogers is out, and Jamie Morris starts. Rogers did not warm up well. He's been hampered by injuries all season, so they have gone to the freshman. This is the fullback, Garrett, up the middle, hit by the left side of that Buckeye defense. As they pound right straight ahead for a couple of yards. And let's show you now the rest of that offense for the Wolverines. Triando Marcre, he enjoyed a banner day last year. Vince Bean, he has started every game since a freshman. Sim Nelson, the tight end, look for him to be used as a pass receiver throughout this game by Zerbrug. With Zerbrug era, I'd expect we'd see some option action here. I think we're going to see quite a bit of option football in here, and I think the Ohio State defense is going to be taxed. Let's see how they handle it. Zerbrug's been doing a good job in the last two games on the option. This is Morris. No running room. He was cut off as he went to the corner that time, and again, it was... Good defense by the Buckeyes. They read the play completely, and Rogan came up, sealed it up, and made the stop. Good defensive play by Greg Rogan, number 29 there. He came across the line of scrimmage, and Morris uh, had no chance on it. Jamie Morris had no chance. Now we have Michigan in a passing situation era, exactly where the Buckeyes want to keep Zerberg this afternoon. Keep him in third and seven, third and eight, and here, of course, it's third and ten. You might even see the option here. He splits the backs. Yep. He'll come up throwing. To the right side, out of bounds, overthrew the intended receiver that time. Now, Vince Bean is his veteran receiver here, Era, and watch his signal here. He's really getting a lot of cushion. He's wide open, but Zerbrock really throws the ball clear out to the outside there. He was going underneath to Morris, and he just didn't pick up the open receiver. And so now it'll be Michigan. Monty Robbins punting, standing back on his own six-yard line. And the official stop play, there was a penalty up at the line of scrimmage. So we're just underway. We've got 11.43 to go here in Columbus, Ohio, and Schimbeckler is extremely upset. That's Jokish. He's, something has happened in the, the route that was run. That's Jokish, the six foot eight receiver. You take a look here. Marty Robbins, the Michigan kicker, is averaging 44 yards. He got two really good punters in this ball game on both sides. Dead side. ball, encroachment, Michigan, 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 offense, Michigan, Michigan, fourth down. Era, that will help the Buckeyes in field position. Lanise is standing back on his own 40. Robbins will now take the snap on his one yard line. Well, 
Reese lets it hit on the 50. It takes a Michigan bounce. Probably should have stepped up and tried that fair catch it there near midfield because that allowed the Wolverines to get an extra 11 yards on that. Now it's a 46 yard punt. So we're tied in Columbus and we'll be right back. For 1985, Colt, the Japanese car famous for quality, economy, and performance. We've got Ohio State, Michigan. USC, UCLA is coming up next. The Trojans, of course, are heading for the Rose Bowl. And if the Buckeyes can beat the Wolverines, they will be their opponent. And, of course, USC, UCLA next on CBS. Here at first and ten for Tom Zack and the Buckeyes. Out of the eye, here comes the big fella, Keith Myers, trying to turn the corner. And they did a good job of springing out the play, and Cochran made the tackle. Cochran's a good football player, the defensive right halfback. 6'3", he's 219, he's not a little guy, one of the bigger defensive halfbacks, came up and supported very well. Byers was forced way deep on that play, he didn't have much chance to get much leverage. We make it sound like it was a losing effort, I think yeah, he picked right, up almost right. five yards. For him, you right? expect that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the ball is up at the 43 now, second down. Ken Blair, number 46, he is the fullback for the Buckeyes. Tom Zach keeps it, rolls around. And he's brought down at the 45-yard line by Scarcelli, number 85. Scarcelli just followed that play around, did a nice job. Number 85 there, pursued it, and came, was not fooled by Tom Zach's fate. Last year, Schembechler was able to keep Tom Zach and the Buckeyes in third down all game long, not giving them a first down on first and second. Here, he's got them in third down again early in this game. And this is a tough down, about three and a half yards to go for. Tough call to runner pass. Puts Lanise outside with Carter, and Lanise comes in motion behind Tom Zach. They'll throw it off the fake to Byers. Byers goes out of the pattern. He's picked up. Now they throw it to him. And he gets the first down and inside the 45. Beautiful run. I don't know why the defender got off it. Well, one of the things about that play is that Tom Zach had enough time to throw the football. You start counting the seconds. It looked like he was going to get sacked, but they didn't get to him. Watch here. An end zone view. They fake the ball to Byers. They do a lot of this. Now, Tom Zach's looking downfield for a deeper receiver. Now he moves to the right, waits, and the key to this play and why it's successful is because he had so much time. He finally hits Byers. Byers gets the first down. And that was Rodney Lyles, 80, who was coming up in that coverage, and he dropped way back on Byers. Now Tom Zach will pitch to Byers, and again it is Cochran making a sensational defensive play. Ball is rolling loose, but Byers was down there at midfield. But what a game Cochran is turning in here early for Michigan. And Earl Bruce wasn't kidding last night. He said he was going to run uh, Tom Zack on the option play, and here he is on the option, coming right at you. Mike Tom Zack with that leg that was broken in spring game, number 15. There's Brad Cochran, number 30, coming upfield, was not fooled, and he gets support there from Sparcelli, number 85. And Byers having trouble with that ankle has limped off to the sideline. Woolridge has checked in at tailback. Second down for Tom Zach and the Bucks. Woolridge goes out. They throw deep to Lanise for the first down inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 33. Beautiful route by Lanise and a great throw by Tom Zach. Perfect. Got right in the scene. Here's a look at it. Great piece of work. They're rushing four people. Michigan is. They're deploying with seven. You see Cochran right there coming up to make the play. There's Mallory, number 42. Could not get over there to make the play. And, of course, Lanise gets the first down. 16-yard game. Woolridge still in at tailback. Walker comes back in at fullback. Carter to the right. Lanise to the left. Tiger is the Buckeye tight end. This is Walker right straight ahead. Beat the Harry defensive Walker line that time. This is one of the largest offensive lines in college football. We did a graphic three weeks ago at Wisconsin which showed that the average weight of this Buckeye line is larger than the average of a National Football League line. You're looking at fellas that are bigger than the Cleveland Browns out there. <laughs> Anytime you see an offensive lineman that starts with a Z and ends with an SKI, you know he can get a couple of fellas. No little fellas in there. Woolridge. Mallory rides him down over there. They'll have a third down coming up here. 
And about four yards for the first down. Last time they were confronted with this situation, they threw the football. It is a tough call. It's right in that in-between. It'd be a good place for that, that uh, split-back lead draw that they use that they've been successful with. They haven't showed us that split back. Sometimes they put Lanise up there in a wing formation, and when they do, watch for Lanise to come through on a bit of a reverse action. They counter with him, but they come out with the eye formation here. The pitch to Willard. First down. Gets inside the 20. Mallory finally back on the tackle. I really think that Michigan has been surprised by Ohio State using the option play. They have not used it during the course of the year. They've come out here with Tom Zack, and Earl Bruce said yesterday he was going to go ahead and run Tom Zack if he had to. They're forcing the pitch, and Tom Zack is doing a beautiful job on it. They're really keeping him off balance. Did you believe it? Earl Bruce spoke to us last night and said he was going to use the option. A couple of Michigan people, they were in the audience. I don't think they went back and told Bo. He'll be furious. <laughs> First down now after that 10-yard run. They come right back with Bo Ridge. He got a couple of yards out of that, and that's about all. That is heavy going against this Wolverine defense now inside the 20-yard line. Well, thus far, you've got to give an awful lot of credit to this Ohio State offensive game plan. They've done a good job. They've kept the Michigan defense off balance, and that's the number two defense, as I've pointed out in this conference. They've played well during the course of the year. There's the leading record in the last five years is Earl Bruce in this conference. And he has beaten Schenbeckler three to two. And he's got his star back on the field. Byers has checked back in at tailback, number 41. He's set behind Walker, the fullback. Second and eight. Tom's to put it up. Beautiful catch by Lanise at the six-yard line. They'll spot it down at the five-yard line. Cochran was all over him. And Tom Zach drilled it in that time. Looked like it might have even been interference here as we see Lanise. Watch Cochran come in from the right side. It looked from up here that he might have made contact even before the ball got there. Oh, yeah. Could have been interference, but it was a great catch there by Mike Lanise, whose daddy played for me at Miami of Ohio. Four-point student, almost a Rhodes Scholar. Mike Lanise. Now double tight ends are at Taggart and the freshman Alex Ignan out of Cincinnati. One of the touted freshmen here at Ohio State. Here is Byers. Squeezed through for a couple of yards. Did you see how intelligent he ran that time? Waiting for the hole to develop, not trying to rush past his blockers in the line, just getting in behind the big beef and burrowing for a couple of yards. Now it's going to be second and goal. They're down at the two-yard line. One of the reasons he's got 1,554 yards and 19 touchdowns rushing. <laughs> Watch him make it 20 on this drive. Fullbacks also in there. Here comes Byers up the middle and he's met head on and he gets down to the one yard line that time. That was power there because that was well defense. You can see, watch what from the end here, number 41, Keith Byers coming right at you. It's well defense right there and he just drives right through him and goes right to the goal line. Now Byers can go over the top. We have seen him do that frequently this season most recently three weeks ago against Wisconsin the problem is with an injured ankle he can't get the spring and get up in the air now we'll see if they go to that play down here on third and goal or elect to run something else here he comes he got into the end zone touchdown Ohio State he was across the goal line by the time he fumbled the ball he had the touchdown and the Buckeyes strike first This is something that Michigan must be concerned about. If they fall behind by a couple of touchdowns, this could be a long afternoon. Bo Schembechler does not have firepower on offense like he has had in the last decade and a half. It is 7-0. Spangler has added the extra point. Here we take another look at this was well blocked. There's a big hole. This time he doesn't have to work quite as hard to get this ball in the end zone. Watch the hole right there. Beautiful. For, oh, and you can see the ball was stripped, but he was past the goal line. 
and it didn't make any difference whether he got it or not in there. And we'll be back right after this message. If you've got what it takes this demanding era, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> I think so. Watch number 57 right here. Tim Anderson will come in here. He'll be deflected by a block from the backside guard. He reaches in and grabs Byer's arm. But right there, you see that he, I think he has passed the line. He has crossed that goal line, and it's no consequence. That thing's in there. I don't think there's any question about it in my mind as I look at it again. There's a reminder. Tomorrow here on CBS, of course, the NFL today starts it off. How about the Cardinals and the Giants? The loser could be out of playoff contention in that one. Of course, Dallas takes on Buffalo. And also, you'll see these games, so check the local listings for the game in your area. Ohio State strikes first in this battle for the Rose Bowl. They lead Michigan 7 to nothing. And that is the question, Jamie Morris. From the goal line, he's coming out for Michigan. Spectacular return, actually, feeling his back in the end zone. Boston College and Syracuse. Doug Flutie, how's he doing? Let's go to Pat O'Brien. Well, Brent will tell you, after a 12-play, 84-yard drive, Flutie hands off to Steve Strahan, who carries it up and over the Orangemen, and BC leads Syracuse 7-0. to nothing. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Pat, and of course, Boston College right now, they are the apple of the Bulls. Both the Sugar and the Cotton Bowl are interested in Doug Flutie and Boston College, and should they win today, they might find themselves in the enviable position of having to make a choice between those two. Zerbrug in Michigan will attempt to do something about that statistic right now. Here is Morris. Got up to about the 27-yard line. the ball carrier. Ohio State is a little more aggressive on defense than we have seen them. They're playing with a lot of emotion. This has been a defensive unit that teams have moved against as the wave takes over here in Columbus. Uh, Brian, uh, Michigan hasn't had the ball very much, only 1.37, minute and a half, a little over a minute and a half. But they'll start moving the ball here. Zerbrug off the fake, rolls around to the left, and he's going to keep it. Gets a first down for the Wolverines. Pepper Johnson. Good fake by Zerbrug that time. Ohio State wasn't sure where the ball was. He had open receivers, but he elected to run the ball. You'll see here from the end zone, he has open receivers. I think Sim Nelson, number 95, is crossing. He fakes the ball to Jamie Morris. You can see he's fooled. The defensive end he rolls out. You see right there, Sim Nelson wanting the ball. Number 95, Zerbrug decides to keep the ball, does pick up the first down. Ball out near the 35-yard line. Three minutes and 44 seconds to go here in the opening quarter in Columbus. Zerbrug to throw it. To his tight end. And Nelson has it at the 42. And Notre Dame against Penn State. Pat, how are the Irish making out? Brand Arrow like this one. Notre Dame drove 77 yards in 17 plays. Then they left it up to Alan Pinkett for the first score of this contest as the Fighting Irish leads the Nittany Lions 7 to nothing. Back to Brent and Era. Good Era, what do you think? Uh, will the Irish go to a bowl if they uh, beat Penn State? I think if they beat, beat Penn State, I think they're going to look at it right after that Southern Cal game. It's a good start for them. Second down and short now for Zerbrug and the Wolverines. They trail it by seven. Goes to Garrett, the fullback, and he'll be stopped short. And again, I am impressed with how aggressive the front is. Dave Morrow, 57, has been in. Giuliani has been in. Eric Camaro, number 14. Byron Lee, 82. The outside linebackers closing down. Right in the last two ball games, that defensive unit right there against Northwestern and Indiana only gave up about 100 yard, 150 yards a game. Just a little over 300 yards in those two games. So they have played well in those contests. And to watch, of course, it's 98. That's Pepper Johnson. He's the ringer out there, one of the inside linebackers. Third down for the Wolverines. He gets the first down. And just barely. Yeah, just on the line there. He had to go to the 45 and he made it. So Michigan puts together two first downs in this drive, but it has not been easy for him. They're making him go the hard way. 
I'm still waiting for Zerglug to run that option to see how Ohio State handles it because you know you're going to see it. Bordas right there, the center for Michigan, is one of the better offensive linemen that they have in the uh, offensive line for this, the Wolverines. Bo has substituted for one of his tight ends, and Bean is back in, and they put him in a slot on the left. Mark Ray in motion behind Zerbro. You know, fake to the fullback. Zerbro down the line. There's the pitch to Morris. And he is met. Did not fool the Buckeye defense. Byron Lee, 82. While we were waiting to see it, we saw exactly what Ohio State did. A beautiful job of containing this. Watch number 82, the left outside linebacker. They fake to the fullback. It's the delay option. Zerbruck deals the ball off to Jamie Morris. Number 82, right here, the outside backer, Byron Lee, comes up and makes a great play and stops him for maybe a half a yard. Nice job. Here's an Ohio State team with a third chance to get to the Rose Bowl. Thought they might have been out of it after losing to Purdue. Then they were upset by Wisconsin, and Iowa had the upper hand. Iowa loses to Michigan State, and here's the third chance for the Buckeyes. Zerbrug back to pass for the Wolverines. He's got Bean open, and he hit him inside the 30-yard line. Sonny Gordon, the rover back, was back there, but Bean was open, and that was a well-delivered pass. Oh, great play. They fake run action away. Here's Bean coming down the, the field and gets into the scene between the defenders, but Zerbrug had faked away. Now watch him throw the ball right in there. Great throw, as you see. Number seven, Sonny Gordon, could have been called for interference, but Bean hand, hand, hung onto the football. 27-yard gain, too. Era has the ball now down at the 28-yard line. So by far the most impressive offensive performance of this game by the Wolverines. Zerbrug has... Michigan on the move. Here is Morris battling close to the 25-yard line. And again, he has replaced the injured Rick Rogers this afternoon. Larry Colick, 33, the linebacker, in there to help on the stop. The backfield action didn't look very smooth that time. Looked like someone might have gone the wrong way. They're trying to run a little counter. You see from ground level here, you see the contact between Zerbrug and Jamie Morris. It just wasn't smooth. Something was wrong that time, even though they did pick up a yard or two. Leaving the arrow with about a second and eight. That's the time remaining in the first quarter. Being back. And throws it complete. Out of bounds at the 18-yard line. And that is Jakish, 84, the basketball player. Yeah, he's about 6'8", but I thought that was a dangerous throw for Zerbrook to throw from the position that he was. The reward wasn't that great. They only made a few yards. Watch here. He comes back there and trips to the left. He comes into the pocket. Beam is crossing across the middle. He throws the ball. He does throw the ball well, but look how far. And what would happen if he had an interception at this stage? Jokic does make a great play, and White makes the tackle right there. Jokic is some target. 6'8", 240 pounds. He's a junior out of Clarkston, Michigan. Now third down for the Wolverines, and an important one. They might have to call on Bergeron to kick the field goal if they don't pick up the first down here. Zerbrug will keep it himself. Run out of bounds, and it's going to be very close. Camaro was over there on the coverage. He was getting to the corner, has the first down for Michigan, keeps the drive going. Interesting call. Quarterback draw on that third down of about three or four. You'll see here, there was no question in his mind that he was going to run it. Zerbrug comes back, tries to draw the defenders. Finds the daylight to the outside as they're playing man-to-man -man underneath. And he runs for the corner here. He fumbles the ball right there. But fortunately for Michigan, it goes out of bounds. And it is a first down. Come on, you ought to be more excited than that, Bo. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. And we will return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. In Columbus, Ohio, with the Buckeyes of Ohio State leading Michigan. But the Wolverines on a drive. They have the ball now, first and 10, at the Ohio State 17-yard line. This is Morris. Gets to the 14-yard line. He was very fortunate to get yardage because that really was well defensed. Jamie did a good job of running on it. There was a lot of penetration on the part of Ohio State. And, of course, near the conclusion of the game, Aaron and I are going to select a Chevrolet, most valuable player of this game, from each of the teams. Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. 
Second down with the ball at the Ohio State 14 yard line. Split backs this time. Perriman is in at fullback. Zerbrod drops it over the middle, complete to Nelson, is tight end. And Nelson, the big fellow, just battles his way down to the five yard line. That's a first down for Michigan. Well, I've got to say that Zerbrod really showed a lot of poise on that play. He was getting a lot of heat from the defensive right side. And he just took, he just stayed right in there and delivered that ball to Nelson. Watch here on the right side of the defense. Watch the penetration they get and the heat they put on Zerbrock right there. But he does get rid of the football. Nelson makes a good catch because it is low. And they're down to the, what is it, which spot side the five-yard line. Good play by Zerbrock. And Eric, since he's playing so well here, let's see what he comes up with at the five-yard line with a first and goal. From the eye, they'll come Morse around the right side and call it number 33 was all over it. He read the play beautifully and Morris didn't have a chance. They didn't get a blocker on Colic and move him a bit. Michigan may have been surprised by the fact that Ohio State went into a goal line defense and got a lot of penetration. Watch right here from ground level. You see Coley come in. There's Jamie Morris, just a freshman, their leading ball carrier. But there's number 33. Larry Coley comes in and gets help from, uh, who was that number? That was Dave Morrill, number 57. And Rogan came up too and took care of Perriman that time. He took the blocker away and then Kalik got the job done. This could be a passing situation. Intercepted in the end zone by Sonny Gordon, number seven. Zerbrook trying to force the ball that time. Omni has always been a good old buddy, a nice little guy, loyal, efficient. Well, we got this kind of sneaky idea. First, we get this on this play. And then he rolled out. He was flushed out of the pocket by Eric Cumro. Watch here. He fakes the ball. Then he rolls out. You see 14 flushes him out. He tries to drill the ball here to Caddis. That's there's Gordon right there, catches the ball. And it looked to me like his left foot stepped on that line. Looked to me as if he was out of bounds on that play. Could be a very pivotal call. And the Buckeyes have it first down, coming out on their own 20-yard line. They lead Michigan 7-0. Tomzak splits his back. And here's Byers. Up to the 23 and Tim Anderson. Inside linebacker with the stop for the Wolverines. So, let's go back and check in again on Syracuse and Boston College. Brett, no, we have Navy and South Carolina, and Navy makes it look easy as Mike Smith goes untouched, and the midshipmen are on the board. Seven to nothing over number two, South Carolina. We'll get to BC later. Back to you, Brent. All right, that's even better than the Syracuse-Boston College <laughs> update to get that one. Oh, Joe Morrison and the Gamecocks will have to come back. They could be headed for an orange ball. I'm Zach. Comes back now for Ohio State and hits the freshman, Chris Carter. First down. What a pair of hands that young man has. Brent, both the passer and the receiver were under pressure that time. Great execution. Tom Zach's having a great day. He was getting heat. Here's Chris Carter here. Just drives up the field. He's getting a lot of pressure. From Garland Rivers, number 13, right there. He breaks to the outside. We don't see Tom Zach here, but he too was under heat. They finally get him down, but not after a great game. Number eight comes in there, who's Doug Mallory. Tom Zach, five of eight for 70 yards. Chris Carter, he is the brother of Butch of the New York Knicks. Like his brother, he too was an outstanding high school basketball player. There's a mishap on the snap. Tom Zach goes down after the ball, and Aaron, in the Wisconsin game, we were told by the coaches that the loss of Kirk Loudermilk, who suffered a broken leg, really affected the Buckeyes not only on the field, but their morale on the sidelines. Exactly. He is really the team leader, the glue that holds that offensive line together. And, of course, the loss really depressed the entire team. I didn't realize that until we talked to Glenn Mason yesterday, the offensive coordinator. But he was a very pivotal guy. But they've moved Bob Maggs in there, and he's doing a good job. Second and ten. Tom's out with time. Pressure from the rear, and he is brought down. Mike 
Brooks was able to circle back on him and Kevin brought him hard to the turf. He's having plenty of time to throw the ball. That time, of course, Michigan had most of the receivers covered. Tom Zach elected to run football, but he, he was pursued by Kevin Brooks, who finally brought him down. It was not like a sack, though. Now the Buckeyes face a third and ten. Tom Zach has thrown the ball extremely well in this game so far. And one of the receivers you have to always keep an eye on for the Buckeyes is Keith Byers out of the backfield. The pitch this time is to Byers on the option, and that won't get him close to a first down. Tupa will have to come on now and punt for Ohio State. Mike Mallory was in there leading the defense. Now, late blitz from the corner. Watch here. Tom Zach's trying to run the option play. Watch the penetration right here. He's forced. He doesn't want to throw it to Byers. Then he throws it out here. Very dangerous. Byers makes a great catch of that football. That could have been a fumble. I think I'd have been inclined to have Tom Zach throw the ball in that situation as well as he's been performing so far here. Two put a punt for Ohio State. Giovanni Johnson at the 16. Down there at the 20-yard line where Michigan will have it. Johnson appears to be shaken up over there on the track. We'll be right back. Wolverines trail by seven. If you've got what it takes and really... College football on CBS, USC, UCLA. That's next, of course. I told you about that. And then keep in mind, next week. Now, this is Friday afternoon, the day after Thanksgiving, 2.30 Eastern time on CBS. It is Boston College and Doug Flutie against Bernie Kosar and Miami. Then the following day on Saturday afternoon, an era has told you that if Notre Dame could beat Penn State, their bowl hopes could very well ride on this game against USC, and that one will be brought to you at 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. The Fighting Irish against the Trojans, that is another one of those great, great rivalries. Right here it is Michigan, trailing Ohio State by a touchdown. The Buckeyes win, they go to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. First and 10, and the Wolverines turnover cost them almost 75 yards in the field. They'll have to move back down now against that Buckeye defense. Speaking of the Irish, how they make it out against Penn State. Let's go back to Pat. All right, Brent, Penn State took advantage of a pass interference penalty. Now Tony Mumford powers his way through the Irish, and Joe Paterno is cheering those Lions as he ties the game up 7-7. Back to you, Brent. Oh, that's a good one going there. So we'll keep you up to date with that. Also, South Carolina has fallen behind. Doug Flutie has Boston College on the board against Syracuse. All that unfolding here this afternoon. Second down now for Zerberg and the Wolverines. Takes to his fullback, brings the option down the line, and he keeps it. Gets out to about the 27-yard line. And Larry Pollock, number 33, a linebacker who's been all over the field, was in on that stop. Zerbrug was fortunate to pick up that kind of yardage. That was well defensed. And uh, Zerbrug cut it inside, avoided a tackler, and got positive yardage on it. Looked like he was going to be nailed right at the line of scrimmage. Pollock is only a junior, 6'1", 242. He's out of Smithville, Ohio. And uh, a lot of game stars on that helmet. Let's see how Ohio State deploys on this short running situation. They're playing standard. Two tight ends for Michigan. And Zerbrug's going to put it up. And he will not get it off. The Buckeyes were not fooled. Chris Silius, number 97, led the defense. And the Wolverines will be forced to punt. Brent, that was a mistake somewhere along the line because Zerbrug rolled back out after the fake. There were no receivers out. He was the opposite side of all the receivers. It appeared it was going to be a run. Watch here. There's no receivers for him to throw the football to. He goes rolling out to the right. There's nothing here. No chance. There must have been a mistake on the part of the ball or the pivot by Zerbra. So Robbins back to punt. Mike Lanise is the deep man. And again, the Buckeyes have come away with favorable field position here in the first half. This time, Lanise does come up with a fair catch. Juggles it momentarily. Ball has it down at the Ohio State 48-yard line. 34-yard punt. 7.42 left in the first half. Ohio State leading. 
between these two football teams and these two bands Ohio State and Michigan what a show they put on now while you were away Bo Schembechler in no uncertain terms told his quarterback Chris Zerbrug that he had messed that play up. There was no question about it there was an error made on the part of Michigan it looked like Zerbrug. Tom Zach back to pass on first down drops it off in the flat and overthrows Byers. Pass and Taylor Keith Byers incomplete. He's getting plenty of time to throw the football. Mike Tomzak is. They had the deep receivers covered. He tried to drop the ball that off the Byers. He did overthrow the ball. The Era, what about the blitz? Will uh, Jerry Moeller, the defensive coordinator of the Wolverines, have to try to get some heat on Tomzak? Well, they, they're reluctant, reluctant to do so. That's not the history of this Michigan team. They'll do it occasionally, but they try to play a very standard defense, zone off, and try to get four men to the ball. On the ball. Second down, oh. Byers has hit the ball is loose, recovered by Tomzak, I believe, who dove back on it. What a hit Byers took. Garland Rivers coming up from the corner, jarred the ball loose. Tomzak on the ball at the 40-yard line. Now that they know that they're going to run the option play, they're really coming. Watch him come hard. Garland Rivers, number 13. Comes smashing in here and takes Byers before he has a chance to field the ball. Fortunately for Tom Zach, he gets on top of that fumble. Otherwise, it would have been a big turnover. Mm, what a blow Rivers delivered on Byers that time. Third down and 19 yards to go. Tom Zach under pressure that time. Flips it over to Byers, an ad lib play. And Keith comes across to the 48 yard line. Brad Cochran, they're on the cover. Oh, that was beautiful improvising on the part of Tom Zach. It looks like he's going to be sacked once here from ground level. Great piece of work. He rolls back, looking for someone to throw the ball to. Finally flushed out to the right and kind of just gives a little pop pass out there to Byers. Byers finds plenty of open daylight, but not enough for the first down. We should tell Mike that's not so great. Flutie gets a touchdown out of that play. <laughs> yeah, he throws a little farther. He shot puts it a little farther. What did he do? He got in North Carolina. He did that earlier this year. He was coming around. All right. Tupa is back to punt for Ohio State. And he is a good one. Could be a quarterback here at Ohio State, too, before his career is over. Look at him hang that ball high, going for the corner, and he's got it out of bounds. At the 13, 12, 13 yard line, looks like. Inside the 15 yard line, the freshman Tom Tupa puts the Wolverines back in a hole again. The ghosts of Christmas past. Gifts given, received, and forgotten. They end time you walk in the locker room and have any idea you're going to lose the game? Well, here it's Michigan trying to come out now, and Rick Rogers and Eddie Garrett have checked in. So they're going to try Rogers. And this is Garrett, and he gets no place against the middle of that Buckeye defense. Now, South Carolina was behind by seven. Let's go back to Pat and see how they're doing. Not anymore, Brent. South Carolina quarterback Alan Mitchell capped an 80-yard drive with this two-yard keeper, and the Gamecocks have it tied up now, 7-7 seven to seven in Annapolis. Let's go back to Brent. No, oh, South Carolina wins this, and Nebraska beats Oklahoma later today. That could be your Orange Bowl matchup right there. They could wind up playing for a national title. Down in Miami. Second down now for the Wolverines. Zubra takes Rogers, sends him out as a pass receiver, comes over to him at the 15-yard line, and Pollock is there on the coverage and held him short of the first down. Zubra's pass is complete to Rick Rogers. It's kind of dangerous stuff down here in your own territory. Zubra comes back, fakes the ball to Rogers, and you see Kolick number 33 coming in and reacting well to the ball as it's thrown. He picks up about five yards on the play. Pollock is playing a whale of a game. Third and four. And this, of course, an important call with 5.24 to go here in the half for Michigan. They would like one more first down at least. And you're going to have to punt in this situation. Zerbrook's back to throw it. And he's got Mark Gray for the first down. 
Well, I'm going to tell you something, Brad. Zerbrug really hummed that ball. That's as good a ball as I've seen thrown by Chris Zerbrug. He got it there quickly and a well-thrown ball. Watch this as we see it here. Watch this. He really shows some class here. He rolls out to the left, starts to get pressure right there from Pepper Johnson, and that ball gets there very quickly. Good job there. William White over on the coverage for the Buckeyes. Michigan offensive line. Not the overpowering offensive line that Shin Beckler has featured much of the last decade and a half. Ball is at the 28 on the first down, and here comes Rogers from scrimmage, gets out across the 30-yard line. One thing that Michigan has not been able to establish on the inside, particularly on first down plays, is any kind of running attack. They're only averaging 2.5, and they've only thrown the ball once on the first down situation. Rogers got a bad knee. I don't know. Bo was worried about how much he could play. He's had an awful lot of injuries during the course of the year, countless numbers. Is that one of the most familiar helmets in football? Goes back to the days when they wore the leather helmets, and that was how the straps were put on, and they just evolved into the modern headgear that they now wear. Here's the pitch to Rogers, following Garrett. Get out close to the 35-yard line. We've got another update on the Irish in Penn State. Let's go back to Pat. Brent. Alan Pinkett's having a great day today. Here's a 17-yard run up the middle after an 80-yard drive. And the Fighting Irish lead 14 to 7. And I think Arrow would agree. Jerry Foss would like to have a win at home, Brent. He sure would, I'll tell you that. He'd like to have a win next week against USC, the game you'll see here on CBS, too. That. Looks like they're off to a good start, though, in that game. But don't sell Joe Paterno short. <laughs> right. His third down. Paul Jokic, 84. Big wide receiver has checked in for Zerbrug. He's got time and he hits Jokic right there. Out of bounds at the 40 yard line. First down for Michigan. Another good throw by Zerbrug. Coverage was good, but he got it in there. There's six foot eight Jokic. You see Zerbrug just goes into the pocket. Now watch him get that ball there quickly. Jokic has to drive down to the outside to make the catch, and he does for the first down. What a target he is at 6'8". We mentioned that earlier in this broadcast, but that makes all the difference in the world for quarterbacks if they can see the receivers. Ohio State's making them go the hard way. They're not giving them any long plays. The coverage has been good. Time running out of the first half. Ohio State with the only touchdown. A win here, and they go to Pasadena to play USC. Zerbrug to put it up. Has plenty of time down the sidelines, under throws, and almost intercepted by Terry White, number 12. I think Terry should have had it. Well, it looked very close. Let's take another look at it here. Just a run action pass, their favorite tailback action. Here's Bean coming right down the line. Greg Rogan, number 29, on the coverage. He gets to the outside, right there, and he drops the ball. I don't know whether his foot would have been on the line or not. Hard to tell. Number 12 there, Terry White. Joe Brug is now 7 for 10 for 72 yards and one interception. Could have been two there. And a big interception it was. They had the ball down at the five-yard line, and after a second down, and that time you can see he underthrew Bean. And he would have been in bounds. His right foot is inside the line. Now we've got a whistle, and Michigan came up to the line of scrimmage. One of the things I've noticed through the years, Era, about the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry, we have very few penalties. We'll be right back in Columbus. First quarter score. Games tomorrow on CBS, Detroit against the Chicago Bears. The Bears are without Jim McMahon, and they have trouble winning without McMahon at quarterback, although Steve Fuller played well last week against the Rams. Now, speaking of the Rams, they will be taking on the Green Bay Packers. The Packers are red hot right now, and if the Bears stumble, the Packers still have a chance to overhaul them. And then on Thanksgiving, you'll see those Packers against the troubled Detroit Lions. And that is at 12 noon Eastern time. Here is Chris Zerbrug. With Jamie Morris back at his tailback, Zerbrug runs the option down the line and goes to Morris, and he has brought down at the 40-yard line, and Lee, number 82, is right there. So far in this game, Colic has eight tackles, Morrill has seven tackles. And Ohio State also has been managed to handle that option play beautifully. Byron Lee, number 82 right there that you see in the screen, has done a great job on it. He's the outside linebacker. He's from Columbus, Ohio. He's 6'3", 230, and a junior, and he is distinguishing himself on the option. State of Ohio, one of the great football states in the United States. I guess Ohio, Texas, Pennsylvania, Florida, and California probably turn out more players than any other states. And Ohio finishes second to nowhere. 
Zerbrog incomplete. Jokic down at the 45 yard line was the intended target. Not a well thrown ball. And the Wolverines will have to punt here with 2.33 remaining in the first half and Ohio State leading 7 0. Got a lot of pressure that time Zerbrug did from Dave Morrill. Looks like he's. That's John Elliott, the right tackle. I don't know what's happened there. The Ohio State University Jazz Ensemble, directed by Tom Battenberg, will present its. Certainly hope it's not too serious. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. in Weigel Auditorium. For the best in big band jazz. Elliott being assisted now by a couple of the trainers from Michigan. Era, we were mentioning the rivalry between the two teams and the bands. And one of the great treats in college football is to watch the performance of those two bands before the game and also at halftime as you see the Michigan marching band about to come on the field. They will tell you they are number one and the Buckeyes of Ohio State say no when we come out and do that script Ohio no one does it any better than we do and at halftime we get time I want to show you a piece of script Ohio. That is you, if you don't get the juices flowing when you hear these bands and the crowd in this stadium <laughs> you don't have any blood flowing in your body. Team up north plays the team down south. Robbins now to punt it for the Wolverines. Lanise is back. Nice fields at about the 13 yard line. Found a little daylight and got out to the 20. Tom Zach and the Buckeyes with 2.22 to work with here. I think it'll be interesting to see whether or not Earl Bruce from this field position at the 20 22 yard line with 2.22 left to go in this half, whether or not he'll throw the ball or play it conservatively and go in at halftime with that 7 to nothing lead. What would you do? Well, I don't know. I, I, he has thrown, Tom Zach has thrown the ball so well, I think I would go ahead and try to move the football. That has been their strength in this first half thus far. They have not grounded out. They've surprised us by their attack. And I just try to get the big play on them if I could. Byers is not on the field right now. Woolridge is the tailback. And that's Woolridge. Swing into the outside. No. Oh. Got six yards before Brooks brought him down from behind with a jarring tackle. You know what's interesting that Woolridge, the number two tailback on the Ohio State team, has more yardage than the leading ball carrier on the Michigan team, which gives you an idea how explosive this Ohio State offensive team has been. Second and four, Woolridge has averaged five yards a pop. Byers is the tailback. This is Byers for the first down. He fires the ball carrier. Jim Scarcelli there to meet him. I think it's just short. I, it's very close. Tackle by third down. Ballard. You're right. It is short. It's short. Let's take a look at these two great universities while we've got a moment. The University of Michigan World on 12 carries a year ago against Michigan he had 115 yards on 26 carries so the defense is doing a good job against him now this is third and short ball at the 30 and here he comes and oh he was hit couldn't get loose no first down and Ohio State will have to punt and they probably should take a timeout right now Anderson and Scarcelli were all over it they really did a great job. Byers has no chance. Watch the penetration by the Michigan team right here. There's number 42, Mallory. And he's getting help from Anderson. And then here comes Scarcelli, number 85. Great piece of defensive work. And they have stopped the clock, forced the punt. A little bit of predictability on that play. Yep. Made it somewhat easy for the Michigan team. But when you've got somebody that good, what are you going to do exactly. there? Exactly. Sure. Exactly. But the, the defense overwhelmed the offensive blockers, and they did a good job of reacting. They keyed on Byers. They guessed right and stopped them. They're going to force a punt here with a minute and 16 seconds left to go in this half. Arrow, with only a minute 16 to go, you're down by a touchdown. What about the strategy of going all out in an effort to block a punt here, even if you rough Tupa and give them a first down and leave them with a minute to work with? 
Well, that, that's one of the dangers. You turn around and you deny yourself an opportunity of getting the ball. You could have a punt return for a touchdown. You have a number of plays that you can get in in a minute, as you well know, with one more time. They only have one timeout. But let's see what they do here. They might go after it. They've got 10 of them up there. Tupa will take the snap at the 15-yard line. Now they drop off. Gets the punt off. Johnson fields it at the 32. Gets up to the 36-yard line. So the Wolverines have a minute seven to work with, and now Zerbrug will try to take it downfield. Remember, they have a strong leg over there on the sideline, too. They can get close and get Bergeron. He was practicing before the game, and he hit some from 52 yards, which means the ball has to be put down, of course, at the 42-yard line. And they've got a minute and seven seconds. A couple of first downs can bring you in the field goal position, as you've just pointed out. So there's a lot of time left on that clock for things to happen. Let's see how wide open they get. What kind of chances they want to take with Zerbrug. Dean comes to the right. Mark Gray goes to Zerbrug's left. Morris comes out of the backfield, and they'll use him as a safety valve. He turned around and fumbled the pass that he should have held on to. So it'll be second and ten. He is the younger brother, of course, of Joe Morris of the New York Giants, one of the teams you'll see tomorrow on CBS. They take on the St. Louis Cardinals. He had a screen out here. They were trying to screen. They had two linemen out in front of him here. He would have picked up some yardage. But unfortunately, you got to catch the ball first before you can run with it. Bergeron staying loose on the sideline for the Wolverines just in case holding the tee of course which is legal in college football and not in the pros when you attempt a field goal. Zerbrug yeah. off the fake. Oh ran the draw beautifully with Morris. I should have listened to you. You called it better than I did. <laughs> Morris, the ball carrier. Well you see now the clock is Stop running on him. He's got third down. He need Mike the first down. Lee. Down toward 40 seconds. He's audibleizing right at the line. Right down the middle, incomplete. Great play by Greg Rogan. He knocked that ball away right at the last second there, Brent. Number 29, Greg Rogan comes over. Watch here from the end zone. They fake to the inside here. Zerbrug is back, trying to throw the ball down the seam right there. Now watch Rogan come from the right side of your screen right there and knock the ball away from his hands. Nelson <laughs> thought he had it. Sure did. The big tight end was wide open. And now it'll be Michigan punting with 29 seconds to go. Lanise goes back. Robbins standing on the Michigan 29 yard line. Ten men on the line for the Buckeyes, but they drop off. Lanise at the 12. Hit right there. Loose ball. Fumble. Michigan's ball. 18. Seconds and the clock is stopped at 17 and an enormous break in this game at 17 seconds Lanise fumbles a punt Michigan recovers and they've got an opportunity you see how those turnovers affect you watch here as Lanise fields the ball he has it secure Bob Perryman comes in here and grabs him right there shakes the ball loose number 37 there it comes free and Michigan recovers the ball what a big turnover that is I'll tell you, one of the fellows who was on the bottom of that pile for him, Arrow, was Brad Cochran. I don't know if they're going to credit him with the recovery. He's had a sensational game in the first half. Seven tackles for him defensively. He was one of the men down. And there he is right there. 17 seconds. The nine-yard line. Let's see what they do. Throws for Jokic too far over his head and incomplete. Now it is second down. See, they tried to pit Jokic, who is 6'8", against William White, who was just 5'10", but Zerbrug overthrew that football. A year ago against Michigan, Ohio State turned the ball over four times, and that led to their downfall. And this turnover now has given Michigan an opportunity to tie the game here prior to the half. And so far, Zerbrug has suddenly come up with five incompletions in a row. The crowd urging on that Buckeye defense. On the blitz, Zerberg will not get away. Terry White, the safety man, poured in on him. 
Terry White came from the right corner and blitzed, timed it up beautifully on the snap, and got to Zerbrug before he can release the football. You see here, number 26, Galvani Johnson, number 26, right there is wide open as he comes across, but it, he has no chance because Zerbrug does not have time to throw the ball. And he says, oh, gosh. Maybe he said more than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. Watch from the right corner. Number 12 come. Zerbrug does not have a chance. 23, Jamie Morris tries to block him, but he can't do it. He holds on to the ball. They're going to try to take that three points if they can. Four seconds to go. Bergeron will attempt a field goal. The ball will be put down near the 28-yard line. So this would be a 38-yard attempt. Long enough, and he's got it. Bergeron puts Michigan on the scoreboard with a 37-yard field goal. And at the half, Ohio State leads Michigan 7-3, and we'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local station. There you see the first half statistics, and the big one is the crowd here today. Up on their huge message board, a new all-time Ohio Stadium attendance record, 90,286, and they're watching a 7-3 score right now as the Wolverines come back on the field. The Buckeyes must either hold on, score a few more touchdowns and outscore Michigan, and they'll be headed for the Rose Bowl for a confrontation against the University of Southern California on New Year's Day. And you'll see these Trojans coming up next here on CBS. It is USC against UCLA, that traditional rivalry. Part of the record crowd on hand, and the weather held up in the past. They've had some windy blustery conditions here in Columbus even back in 1950 they had one of the most famous snowstorms in the history of college football Vic Janowitz and Chuck Ortman of Michigan got into that punting duel that day and it was a blocked punt of course that pulled it out for Michigan and that was the year era of the snow was so deep here at Ohio Stadium that they had to have members of the grounds crew well, they were out there with brooms trying to sweep off the snow to tell where folks were out of bounds and where the yard markers were, and you and I had, had a heck of a time broadcasting now, that game. Where do you suppose Woody Hayes was then? He was at Miami of Ohio playing at Cincinnati in that same blizzard, and the next year he was here coaching. Well, let's take a look at that condition back in 1950. Wolverines winning it on this blocked punt. Vic Janowitz was set back to punt it and there it was the block by me there you see the fellow with the broom get out of the way <laughs> he'd been brushing off some of the snow folks in that game Vic Janowitz of Ohio State punted 21 times Chuck Ortman of Michigan punted 24 times that's 45 punts Janowitz had four blocked Ortman had one block there was not a single first down in that game well, you know, we play this game under all conditions, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so here come the Buckeyes now, who will kick it off, of course. That was Spangler getting ready. He'll send it down, and Jamie Morris, number 23, he'll be the deep man for Bo Schimbeckler's Wolverines. So a Rose Bowl is at stake here, and 30 minutes of action, and hold on, here we go. Imagine the whole state of Iowa is watching right now, too, because if the Wolverines can come back, the Hawkeyes can get to Pasadena if they beat Minnesota tonight. Morris is out, stopped short of the 10-yard line. The Buckeyes were all over that punt. There's Chris Spielman, number 36, another member of this outstanding freshman class. What a future he's got as a linebacker here. That was not a very wise decision on the part of Jamie Morris. He was in the end zone. And on top of that, the ball had a lot of hang time on it, and the coverage was excellent by Ohio State. And look at the field position, not even outside the 10. That Spielman came out of Massel in high school. They turn out all those kids and realize his picture was on a Wheaties box already. I mean, that's doing it early. <laughs> of course, he was injured most of the season. Got hurt in the Iowa game right here. And he was back for a half last week and again playing this, this week. Chris Zerbra, he was erratic in the first half, had some good moments and some he'd rather not have had. Brings the Wolverines up to the line of scrimmage. They'll run Morris right out of the eye, and he bangs out across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Brent, on that, on that play, they made 
eight more yards than they did the whole second quarter. Michigan carried the ball 12 times in the second quarter and had zero yards. At least they got some yardage on that play. And the defensive captain from Michigan made the tackle for Ohio State. That is Pepper Johnson, number 98. And the Wolverines have been staying away from him. Pollock has been forced to make many of the tackles. They come at Johnson again that time. Out to the 25-yard line. Larry Collick, number 33, again stepping over to help out on the stop. Well, at least they got the ball out of a very dangerous field position. They were back inside their 10-yard line. Now they got some breathing room out to the 24. So Perryman, the fullback, picks up the first down. Nelson, the tight end. To sure drugs left. They'll run Morris again. Up over the top fumble. Ohio State jumps down and appeared to have recovered. Let's see what the signal is from the officials. He's calling it down. That he was down when he hit the ground. The ground cannot cause a fumble. That's the rule generally that you hear from, but it was very close. Let's take another look at it if we can see. You see right here, good level shot of it. You'll see Jamie Morris dive over the pound. It appears just as he hits the ground. Right there, yes, it was a ground-causing fumble. Good call by the officials. Perry picked up about three yards. Rogers has replaced Morris at the tailback spot. Johnson goes in motion. They take it away from Perriman. Sherbrooke still has it. Gets to the 40-yard line. Rogan on the far side. In on the stop. Ball is out at the 40-yard line, and there was a penalty marker down on the play. Otho Courts is the referee. Bo Schembechler awaiting their decision on this one. And a player is injured on the far sideline. I didn't see the signal there. Schembechler is furious. He's on the field. They could call it. He's in dangerous territory. What do you think Woody Hayes is thinking up here in the press box as he watches that? He likes it. <laughs> 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 At least he likes Bo's energy in it. Let's see what the call was. Giovanni Johnson was injured for the Wolverines. Illegal shift. Offense. Illegal shift. They had Johnson in motion that time. Michigan penalty, illegal motion. I think that what he did, Coach, he might have stepped forward. Let's take a look Let's at Johnson come in behind see. now. So here he goes in motion. Everything looks okay. I don't know what. I can't see the call. I think out of frame, it's possible that he cut up field. I think he thought maybe he was playing for the Rough Riders or somebody up in Canada. But he called illegal shift. Which well, I think he yeah, meant illegal clock. motion. We'll have to now be ask Otho about that afterwards. Of the stadium. It was the reverse pivot option play that he picked up 14 yards on. It was the first time that Ohio State has not handled the option. Because they did a beautiful job in the first half. As a matter of fact, the Ohio State defense played exceptionally well in that first half. The secondary covered receivers well. The line played well. This delay is because of the clock. They're getting it set now to the correct time and getting all the watches synced up. And they were telling the coaches on the sideline. That's the one that is operating at 1413. The other one now on the far side had run down to about 1308. But the official one is to our right. And here's second down and 12 now for Zerbo. Jamie Morris, close to a first down before he finally went out of bounds there. Good, he got good protection. Zerbrug got excellent protection that time, and that's why that play was successful. It gave Jamie Morris an opportunity to get open. Zerbrug did hum the ball in there. Appears to be very close to a first down, but good execution on the part of Michigan. The officials are leaving the ball on that far side to get it measured over there at the Michigan bench. 
ball is out of bounds at about the 34 yard line. Dave Brasilius was shaken up for Ohio State and he has gone to the sideline and yes it is a first down for the Wolverines. I guess he was shaken up in a automobile accident last week. Now they get the clock on the left side of the stadium correct at 12:51, and that one on the right has gone dark. Go here at his first and ten for the Wolverines. Zogler keeps it, and now he pitches to Morris. And that was Eric Kummerow, 14, a linebacker who laid a lick on him. There's a Michigan player injured. And Terry Boyd. Now we're going to come back to Columbus in just a moment. Ohio State ahead, 7 to 3. Return of college basketball next Saturday here on CBS with Billy Packer, Louisville Cardinals, and the Indiana Hoosiers. 1 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Bobby Knight would love to have that Olympic team going for him in that one, wouldn't he? Coach, what happened now in the Michigan offensive line? How have they had to juggle? There was an injury there. They've had so many injuries, they'd already lost their right guard, and they moved Hammerstein over to the left guard in place of uh, Tabacino and moved Topowski in the right guard. Zuglug to throw it on second down. He's got a man all alone, and it's Vince Bean out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Michigan's coming out this second half, opening up the attack. Another factor, Brent, as you look across, you see the flags now. They're starting. The wind is picking up from the south, and there was no wind in the first half, and now the wind could be a factor in this game. So that gives the Wolverines first down near midfield with the big flag here in the horseshoe starting to flap and Zerbrook 9 of 16 for 95 yards 12 14 to go in the third quarter the Buckeyes leading the Wolverines 7 to 3 Ohio State goes to the Rose Bowl if they win and that is white Gerald White number 22 with his first appearance in the game Okay, here's some offensive line play. You see number 78 there, Mark Hammerstein, who came across and trapped. And of course, he replaced in injured Bob Tabacino. And White reads off of that, picks up some yardage on the play. But this has been one of the shortcomings in the Michigan offense this year. They've had a tough time organizing that offensive line, a combination of injuries and other factors. Second and four with Johnson in motion. And this time it is Perriman straight ahead, close to a first down, might be just a bit short. Looks like it's close enough to measure, Brent. Eric Tabacino, who was shaken up a moment ago, has returned to that offensive line. And of course, that has been one of the problems for Michigan this year, as you have pointed out several times here today. Well, they lost James last week, their right guard, and then moved in Mark Hammerstein, and of course, he had been injured also. He had some bruises. I'd say just a little short. You see there about a half a foot. Pepper Johnson looking over to the sideline to get the defensive signal from the Buckeyes. Seven is the fullback. They run white. Off the left tackle spot for the first down. He got to the 40-yard line. Byron Lee, 82, the linebacker in on that stop for the Buckeyes. Update on Florida. The school, of course, awaiting the decision of the Southeastern Conference as to whether or not they might be able to go to the Sugar Bowl. Syracuse leading Boston College, and if that held up, that could throw the bowl picture completely up in the air. An impressive performance by Notre Dame and South Bend this afternoon against Penn State. There's the oldest rivalry. We think this one's old. 81 years. How about that one? Now it's first down. 
And again, it is White banging inside the 35-yard line. And Chris Spielman, freshman linebacker, who is now out there for Earl Bruce, helping out on the stop. That's the 11th play on this drive. And, and, you, and you can see that Ohio State is at least making them go the hard way. I've always felt that the longer you can make a team drive, the more often you are to come up with a turnover of some kind. The percentage of there starts to work against you in a long, long drive like this. Second and four. White again. Good run. Inside the 25-yard line, and Schoenbeckler may have found a running back, Gerald White. Well, the other thing, too, is that he is keeping the ball away from Tom Zack and Byers and their great receivers, Chris Carter and Lanise, and that's the way to beat Ohio State is to keep the ball yourself. Byers is over on the bench. As long as he can bleed time off of that clock, the percentage percentages go to the underdog, which is Michigan, of course. Wisconsin eyeing a bull bid, leading Michigan State in the second quarter. And North Carolina State ahead of Duke. Gerald White, if you are wondering, is from Titusville, Florida. He is 6'1", 205 pounds. First down, here comes White again. Broke a tackle, got inside the 20, and this man has come to play a game here in Columbus this afternoon. Camaro makes the hit for the Buckeyes. Well, they found a little soft spot over the defensive left side. They've been going over the right side there. Let's take a look from the end zone here. There's good, well, there was a missed tackle right there. Otherwise, it had no game. Number 57 there, which is Dave Morrow, missed the tackle. Also, Eric Perriman was very concerned. That's the lead fullback on picking up Pollock, the linebacker who was so active in the first half. They did an excellent job of sealing Pollock out so he could not get over to that side. Second down. And now flags go down. Ohio State claiming that they were pulled offside. Zerbruck and some of the Wolverines perhaps insisting that the noise was too much. Schimbeckler again upset over on the far side. Zerbruck should have asked for... Now see, Zerbruck should have asked for a discretionary timeout. He had problems. And you can see... Bo is really upset. You think he's fired up? It's only the fourth penalty in this game. You know, Aaron, I'm not so sure that Zerbrug wasn't asking for the discretionary timeout. He turned around, and I wondered at the time what he was doing. And he may have been complaining right there, and that is what Bo's beef is. Nevertheless, it's five yards. Off the fake to White. Zerbrug hits his tight end drop inside the five-yard line. Nelson. And Terry White, number 12, was there on the coverage. Hey, let's find out about Notre Dame and Penn State. Brent, you gave the score of that game. The story has been Alan Pinkett, 26 carries, 148 yards. This is his fourth touchdown of the game. And the Irish lead the Nittany Lions 31 to 7. They're at the half. Back to you, Brent. All right, that was not much of a contest anymore. Michigan now comes up to the line of scrimmage. It is third down and nine yards to go. The ball is on the Ohio State 25. The Wolverines trail the Buckeyes 7-3. Zerbrug on an inside handoff, trying to get some misdirection to get Gerald White around, and nothing was going. The Buckeyes were all over it. Tried that little shovel pass on the inside. They tried to catch him, but Darrell Lee back in there again. He's played a great ball game. Watch him. They'll try to shovel it to Gerald White, number 22, right there. But it's well played, beautifully by Ohio State, did not fool them, and now they're confronted with a field goal situation. And as White came around, he tripped over Tabachino, his own lineman in that sequence, and here's Bergeron. This, of course, the 45-yard attempt. He is one for one here this afternoon. Long enough, and it's good. Bergeron has just pulled Michigan to within one point. It's 7-6, 7 7.55 in the third. Well, moms and dads the world around. 
defeated Bo Schembechler live, and just a few moments ago, he read the riot act to referee Otho Courts about not giving his quarterback a discretionary timeout. It has now been confirmed by those who are watching Zerberg that he did ask for it, and Courts didn't give it to him. Does he have to, Errol? No, he doesn't, but Zerberg should have turned and walked back to him and asked him for a discretionary timeout. He just turned back to him, and the official said, go ahead and play. I tell you, and Bo is really complaining because it did stop a drive. It was a very, very important five-yard penalty. All right, now let's reset the scene for you in case you have not watched the entire game. Ohio State came out and opened things up in the first quarter. They were much more pass-oriented than we expected. They got the first touchdown. It was a run by Keith Byers. He fumbled going in after he had broken the plane. Ohio State dominated. But then Michigan went on a drive and had a pass intercepted in the end zone. It appeared as though the score was going to be 7 to nothing at the end of the half. Mike Lanise, unfortunately, didn't fair catch or let a punt roll into the end zone. And after the fumble, Michigan kicked a field goal. Now they have just kicked their second field goal to pull within a point. And on this kickoff, bounces out of the end zone. Ohio State will put it in play on the 20-yard line. And the Buckeyes are finally getting the ball here in the second half. Yeah, but not until 7.05 was run off the clock by Michigan, a 15-play drive that netted 62 yards, and how important that, that penalty was because it did blunt that drive. It had, they had to settle for a field goal. Ken Blair, 46, comes out with Tom Zach. He'll be the fullback set in there. Taggart, 80, is the tight end. They have a couple of fellows in that offensive line who could go as top draft choices in the NFL. This, of course, is the junior on a buyer as he breaks a tackle. He gets out to the 28-yard line. Mike Mallory finally brings it down. We should say a well-rested Keith Byers. Not only that, he made more yardage on that play than he did in the entire second quarter. He carried the ball six times in the second quarter for eight yards. He made, I think, eight, <laughs> eight on the first crack in this first time he has an opportunity in the second half. Errol, the pressure is on this Ohio State offense right now. No question about it. They've got to move the football. This is second and two. Here comes Byers again, squeezing out to the 30, which would be a first down. A 7-19 to go in the third. South Carolina and Navy. Big upset brewing in that one. So let's go back to pass. That's right, Brent. Now watch here. The cameraman gets fooled, and so does South Carolina on a trap play. Rich Klaus takes it in, 53-yard run, and the midshipmen are sinking the Gamecocks Orange Bowl hopes. Back to you, Brent. Major, who can figure out this season? We come back with Tom Zach throwing the ball over the middle, complete to his tight end Taggart, and Taggart squeezes out another first down. Two first downs quickly, and Tim Anderson, 57, the linebacker, on the hit for the Wolverines along with Rodney Lyles. On that 11 yard gain, the ball is out at the 41. Blair checks back in. He had been replaced by a walker. This is Byers out to the 47-yard line. Well, they've got that ball out of that dangerous territory. They started back at their own 20, and now they've moved it out to almost midfield, which is a good sign for the Buckeyes. Byers seems to be running with more power in the second half. You know, he had that ankle, which he got in that Wisconsin game, bruised it again a couple weeks or last week, and uh, but now he looks like he's really forgotten about it and driving off of it. Second and six for Tom Zach in the Buckeyes. Comes with the fullback, Walker, who gets to the 50. They'll still be short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Rodney Lyles, one of the outside linebackers, 80, coming down to help out, make that initial hit. This will be interesting right here on this play because it's third down and about a yard and a half, two yards. And what we want to watch is to see what kind of defensive deployment Michigan takes, whether or not they want to take a risk and come up and go into their goal line defense and force an issue here at midfield. They're coming into their standard defense. The guys need two for that first down. They sweep with Byers. He is cut off and he will not get it. Hammered out of bounds and that was 
Cochran who came up to help out and finally get him out of bounds, number 30. Scarcelli, number 85, really forced the issue. Watch here, the outside back on the left side, number 85. There's the pitch to Byers. He's flushed from the inside, and there's number 85, Scarcelli, that forces him so deep. Then number 30, Cochran comes up and knocks him out of bounds. A great defensive play on the part of the Michigan Wolverines. And without much of a rest, that Ohio State defense is going to have to come back on the field here after this punt by Tupa. It is fourth and seven after that loss. 5.38 to go in the third. We've got a one-point game, and we got a Rose Bowl hanging in the balance. Johnson at the five-yard line for Michigan. Gets out to the 17-yard line. There appeared to be a penalty flag down inside the five-yard line. Buckeyes are signaling as though there might have been a clip down there against Michigan. We'll hold on here and see. There it is. It was a 50-yard kick by Tupa. Watch where that ball winds up. The spot foul at the four-yard line, the three-yard line, the ball's moved to the yard and a half. On the run back, first stop. How do you like that field position? That was a big penalty there. They were out to the 18-yard line. Now they're back to the one and a half, and we'll be back right after this message. And the last time they had the ball, Chris Zerbrook, the quarterback, asked the referee for a discretionary timeout. He said he couldn't hear because of the crowd, but of course the referee did not give him the timeout. They took a penalty for delay of game. Schimbeckler was furious. Now another penalty against the Wolverines. A clip on this punt return. And it has the Wolves back on their own one-yard line. They've gone to a double tight end. They'll just try to get a couple of first downs if they can. Running the fullback right straight ahead out to the six-yard line. That'll give them a bit of breathing room as Perriman was the carrier. Well, that was a big play there. They did get the ball out to outside the five-yard line. As a matter of fact, it's out to the six, I guess. Outside the five, but that is that's a big movement of the ball because they really were in dangerous territory. Schembechler sends in the play from the sideline. Mark Ray, a wide receiver, bringing it into Zerbro. Three seconds to get it off. Off the play fake, they're going to throw from deep, and they do complete to the tight end, Nelson. First down, big call. Out to the 18 and Pepper Johnson, the linebacker, was over there. That was a great call by Michigan. They think the run action pass held the defense well. Here you see it right here. They'll come in and watch the fake the tailback action on the inside, keep the ball. You see Nelson working away from Pepper Johnson, who was supposed to cover him right there, and they knocks him out of bounds, but not until he got the first down. Do I remember a pass to a tight end of Notre Dame one night in the Sugar Bowl against <laughs> Alabama? <laughs> well, different situation. No wonder you said it was a good call, right? <laughs> First and 10 now at the 18 for Michigan. And they run right straight ahead with the tailback. Gerald White, Gerald White who has come on here in the second half and he has been very impressive. Remember Rick Rogers slowed by an assortment of injuries. Jamie Morris, he carried the burden in the first half. And of course, next we got more action for you. The Trojans of USC and the UCLA Bruins coming up. And if Ohio State wins, they would play USC on January 1st in the Rose Bowl. What happens if Ohio State should lose? Well, then Iowa controls the future, as you see one of the Buckeye Ohio players Virginia shaking up his down right Sunday now. Classics. If Ohio State loses and Iowa wins tonight in Minnesota, then Hayden Fry gets to go to the Rose Bowl. We're going to come back to Columbus, and we'll do that in just a moment. The Orange Bowl next week for this one. Boston College and Doug Flutie, he's having some problems this afternoon against Miami. They'll have something to prove with Bernie Kosar. Kosar against Flutie. Friday afternoon on CBS, 2.30 Eastern time, and then on Saturday, it's the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against the USC Trojans. They won't let you work that game. You'd be too emotional. <laughs> you, you'd be too partial. Yeah. You, would, you wouldn't play oh. that one down. We oh, you don't think it. I'd be partial, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Any more than you are when Northwestern's playing, huh? Yeah, exactly. I got a lot to be partial about. Now, Daryl Lee, number 95, one of their big left tackles being helped off the field here. 
He's right here from Columbus, Ohio. He's a senior, 6'3", 258, and we certainly hope he's not too severely injured. Injured. Here, I mentioned a moment ago, how can you figure this college football season out? What's going on? Well, that's the competition that we have in the, at the collegiate level. It's unbelievable. Anything can happen on any Saturday. Pete Rozell would die for parody like this. <laughs> Second down now for the Wolverines, about eight yards to go, and Joe Burger will come up firing. Out of bounds. 409 to go, third period. Yeah, now he's got a third four, and eight. They just threw that one away. Terry White. Colic checks back in from the sideline for Earl Bruce. Well, Ohio State just hasn't had much opportunity in this third quarter. We're running it right at the four minute level, and they've only had 23 yards and they had the ball just one time. Big Paul Jokic. They split the Zerba to right side. They've used him in these long situations. They're not looking for him this time. That's go underneath to Nelson. First down. Nelson comes out to the 39-yard line before he steps out of bounds on that far side. A gain of 19 yards and a first down and a big play for the Wolverines. Boy, it really was. Nelson kind of delays right there, number 95, on your left side of your screen. Then slips under the zone coverage right there, wide open. Nobody on him. He gets a great block downfield by, uh, I believe it was Paul Jokic. And he's driven out of the bi ball, <laughs> out of bounds finally by Terry White. Great play by Zerbrug and Nelson with a little delay. So now Zerbrug, 11 of 20 for 126 yards and that one costly interception. But he could be fueling still another Michigan drive here. Ball is out at the 39-yard line for Schindler. Fake to White and Zerbrug did indeed hand it to him and Dave Zerbrug Moore, 57. And let's find out what's happened with Florida and Kentucky. Dave let's send you back to pass. All right, Brent, Ker Kerwin Bell now, the Gators, rolls out. He's looking for a receiver. He doesn't really have anybody, but Frankie Neal is there, makes a great catch, and it's now 19 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Back to Brent Nara. Jalen Hall, he deserves to be the coach down there. You take over a situation like he did this year and come up with a performance. That team could have quit so fast, winded up on probation the way they did, lose Charlie Pell. What a job he's done. Marvelous job. Second down and nine. Zerbrug off the fake, will throw it this time. Hard to the side, and Jokic. That is six foot, eight inches of target. He just hit him, and they're out there at about the 49-yard line, and there, you get the feeling that Schimbecker and the Wolverines are doing it all right here this afternoon. Well, they've opened up. They're willing to throw the football, and Zerbrug's having a uh, somewhat inconsistent afternoon. There is one of his better throws to Jokic, right there almost to the first down marker. We get word from the sideline, Daryl Lee, who you saw, helped off a little bit there. He suffered his right shoulder was injured on the play. So it's unlikely that he'll be back this afternoon. Now it is third and short. Only eight seconds to get this play off right now. Two tight ends. This is White. Gets the first down inside the 40-yard line. He has been a very impressive runner here this afternoon. He really has. They stopped Jamie Morris. They stopped Rodgers. But White has come in here in this second half and done a great job. Pepper Rodgers almost had him there for about a yard gain, but he lost him and went down the sideline for a big, big gain, 15-yard. So they're going to take Byron Lee into the locker room. And there are a few injuries any more painful than those dislocated shoulders. You know, interesting statistic already. Michigan has put the ball up 21 times, so don't say Bo doesn't throw it. Like you said at the top of the broadcast, he could play this one wide open. Here's Perriman banging down to the 26. He had nothing to lose. Close to still another first down for Michigan. And remember, should they stall down here, a third Bergeron field goal would at least put them ahead. Here, I've got to go back to the start of the game. I thought Ohio State was so impressive with the way they were mixing up plays, throwing the ball up using that freshman Chris Carter they got a little too conservative went back to just handing the ball off to Byers. Well what has happened in this the momentum now is on Michigan side they're able to move the ball Ohio State has only had the ball one time in this quarter they made a couple first downs and then had to give it away. Blitz. It's a first down at the 26 the Buckeyes are coming and they nail him quickly Terry White you read it right. 
Well, they had to take some chances to get that drive stop. And that's the kind of play that uh, you can either knock them down for no gain or they might pop one through there and look out, they go all the way. But that time that White got in there and got the job done. Can you believe that one? I just don't believe that. Unbelievable. 31 to 7, Navy over South Carolina. And I read that Napoleon McCallum may come back and try to play against Army. Is that right? That's what I saw. I read in the paper. Second down for Zerberg on the pitch now to White. Coming around the left side, bangs inside the 20-yard line, and Sonny Gordon, the rover, was in there on the tackle. Let's find out some more about that Navy South Carolina game. Let's go back to New York and here's back. Well, Brent, Brent, they didn't need Napoleon McCallum today. Bob Miss rolls to the right. He hits Chris Weiler, and it is now 31 to 7 over South Carolina. Back to you guys in Columbus. Well, there's a case, there's a case, era of a school saying we've got Clemson next week talking Orange Bowl. I'm now mentioning South Carolina, and they simply took Navy too lightly. Now you know how tough coaching is, Brad. <laughs> Third down here, and three yards to go for Michigan. Zerglug on the keeper will not get the first down, and again, Sonny Gordon, that rover back, was in there to help out. He has been all over the field, number seven. Here's another look at it. He's trying to run the option play down the, down the line. He keeps the ball, steps inside, and there's number seven up on the line of scrimmage, the strong safety, and he makes the tackle for, what did he get, about a yard or so on the play, I guess. Here is Bergeron, a young man who is not under scholarship right now in Michigan. Bo explaining that situation to us there. He got him a good job in the offseason. He was a night watchman, and of course he's due to graduate around Christmas, and so he's been paying his own way to Michigan, and right now he could be the most valuable man in that school. No good. He misses. Ohio State holds on to its one-point lead. It was 12 for 14 going into that kick, and it looked like it was just wide to the right. Oh, he's shocked by it, too. Let's take another look. It looks like the ball just goes to the right of the right post. There's a look at it. It looks like it's going to be good, but it sails just outside. And Bergeron has missed a field goal that would have put Michigan ahead. And look at his. Look, he's trying to do a little body English, and he knows it's to the right. Oh. You know, uh, all right, Tom Zach here on first down, rolling to the right. He'll run it out of bounds, picking up about two yards before he finally goes out. I was going to comment while we were looking at that replay. I was watching the Michigan sideline. Bo Schembechler walked right up to Bergeron and gave him a big hug. And the thing now with the kicker is not to have his confidence dimming as a result of that miss. They've still got the final quarter to go. And the way Michigan has been moving the ball into field goal range, it could come down to Bergeron again. Brent, that's such a very important point because he does not want, he wants to keep his confidence up. Second down for the Buckeyes. Tom's out to throw it again. Over the middle and complete. First down to the tight end, Tiger. Tiger made a nice catch. The ball was a little low. It was thrown hard enough to get in there before the defenders could react to it. But you can see that Ohio State is coming out, throwing the football. That's two in a row. That big scoreboard that they installed here in Columbus in the background. Chris Carter, their freshman receiver. And we come to the end of the third quarter. Ohio State leading Michigan 7-6. We'll return in just a moment. Some people think the IB third quarter. It really was. Michigan had that ball over 12 minutes. And Ohio State, 2 minutes and 49 seconds, and the yardage was 152 to 38. But there's only three points that Michigan got on the board. Here's a first and 10 for the Buckeyes. They're out at their own 35-yard line, and they come straight ahead with Barry Walker, Walker, the fullback, the for a couple of yards. 7-6, Ohio State leading Michigan, and a win would put the Buckeyes in the Rose Bowl against USC. 
there are other bowls represented here today by the way the Cotton Bowl has someone watching these two teams I suspect they might consider Ohio State if Michigan would upset the Buckeyes the Fiesta Bowl is also here Blue Bonnet Bowl Citrus Bowl and of course someone from the Rose Bowl Comzak pulls back out and he's got Taggart again and so more than any game this year they have suddenly gotten the tight end into the action and Doug Mallory number eight on the covers. Here's another look at it. Taggart comes. You see him on the left side of your screen. Number 80 comes all the way over. And you see the safety man come up and make the play right there. Now, Ohio State is confronted with that same situation again, Brent. Third down, about a yard and a half. And Michigan has done a great job in this situation about three times in a row stopping Ohio State. Here it is at third and two. Hooks up, didn't get it. Done it again. He fires the ball carrier. Tackle Mike by Hammerstein Hammerstein led the defense. But just an isolation play to the right. Byers does not dive over the pile. Right there, he gets tripped up by number 66, Mark Hammerstein. Great play. Look at all the penetration he got. And once again, on the key third down play. Byers is far less than 100% physically. Limping a bit, he's been held to 38 yards and 18 carries, and of course that one touchdown, going off to the far side, having trouble with that ankle, depressed about not making it. Tom Tupa punts it. Oh boy, good one. Johnson's going to let it go and hope it gets into the end zone. It does. Ball goes into the end zone for a touchdown. So it'll come out. At the 20 yard line. 57, 57 yards. That freshman has just boomed the punt. We'll be right back. It's a 7 6 game. Because of an injury, we'll get that check down on the bench. Kalik has been all over the field. Has a rain jacket on now, so the young man, Spielman, could find himself right in the middle of the most important defensive series of the year as far as the Buckeyes are concerned. They lead it by a point. There's 12.55 to go. It's 7-6. Zerbrook splits the backs. The pound straight ahead. Make it no place. What a play by Giuliani. The middle guard. He got a lot of penetration and met him right at the line of scrimmage and drove him right straight back. Real piece of work there. Number 59. Perriman, the fullback, was the ball carrier. Jokish, rangy wide receiver, comes in. You can see Perriman and Juliana slipped off the block as a good middle guard can control the center. Look at how disgusted Bullard the center is. Yeah, how did I miss that? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, great play by Giuliani. Second down and 11. Zubrug delivers on the screen. To the 24-yard line, and Camaro, the sophomore linebacker and the former high school quarterback, to make the stop. That was a great play by Camaro. Looked like that screen was going to be set up. Watch here. Zerbrug will draw him in. Little slip screen out here to the your right. And watch Camaro come inside of the blocker right there. The blocker number 78 absolutely missed it. And that is Mark Hammerstein. Kolick is out for the rest of the game. Re-injury of the left shoulder. And he was very active. 11.39 to go. This is third and six for Michigan. Zerbrug to put it up. Flushed. Won't get it, and he slammed to the turf over there on the far side. Good defense that time by the Buckeyes. And Terry White, along with Pepper Johnson. Pepper White, I mean, uh, Johnson flushed him out, and Terry White made a great tackle on the play. What's interesting about it, Terry White, who's a free safety, is the number two tackler on that Ohio State Buckeye team. Really a good one. Robbins will punt. Lanise, who has been a little shaky, returning punts, is standing on his 30-yard line. Juggled one, which he held, fumbled another toward the end of the first half, which set up their first field goal. And that time they did not get the ball in Lanisha's hands. They punt it off to the side, and that fellow number 11, that is Keith Key, who made the fair catch. We come back. There's 10:48 in a Rose Bowl at stake. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. 
It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck. Glad you're with us. It's been a good one, and there's more to come. 10-48, Buckeyes leading the Wolverines 7-6. Earl Bruce needs this victory to get into the Rose Bowl. Here's a first and 10. Ball is at the Buckeye 45-yard line. Mike Tomzak to throw on first down. All the time in the world, and now Brooks closes in on him. Tomzak could not get the ball off. His wide receivers were covered, and finally Brooks came free of a blocker and slammed Tomzak down. How about Boston College and Syracuse? Let's go get an update now from Pat O'Brien. Brandon, it is windy in Boston, so BC and Doug Flutie, they're staying on the ground a little more. This one to Troy Stratford. It is now 14 to 10, BC over the Orangemen. Back to Brent Nara. Tough afternoon, and of course, that Syracuse team upset Nebraska earlier this season and played BC very well last year. On the delay. That is Keith Byers out to the 44 with second and 14, and he's short of the original line of scrimmage. They've got about a third and 12, and Tim Anderson along with Kevin Brooks again. Moving in on the stop for the Wolverines. I'll tell you what I would do, if, uh, Brent. I would, I would go to the ball with that Chris Carter. The play before when they threw it, he wanted it so badly. He was downfield. He was, he was open momentarily, but Tom Zach seemed to freeze on the thing. Did not want to throw the ball. Seemed to be hesitant about throwing it. Shim Beckler's defensive coordinator, Gary Moore, the former head coach of Illinois, has done a marvelous job here this afternoon. He's matched against the former assistant he had at Illinois, and that, of course, is Mason, the offensive coordinator of the Buckeyes. Beautiful. Oh, Lenise grabbed the ball at the 40-yard line. Mike Lenise with a sensational catch for the Buckeyes. 17 yards, and that could be the biggest play of the game. They had to have a big one, and they got it. Boy, it, this is a sensational catch. The ball is thrown slightly behind him right here. It's almost deflected. He turns, stretches out, and grabs that ball. That is a key play. Third down and 10, and he picks it up. Great job by Mike Lanise. And that could give the Buckeyes an enormous lift here with 9.13 to go for a Rose Bowl. Byers is slammed down after a gain of about a yard, running behind the right side of that huge offensive line of his. They really have done the job on Byers this afternoon. The Michigan defense has done an outstanding job, and with 8.56 left to go, they're bleeding that time off the clock, but they can't take any chances. They've got to get some more points on that board because a field goal can put them in trouble. Second and eight for Tom Zach and the Buckeyes. Let's throw it again. He wants Carter. He's got him for a first down and out of bounds at the 25. Let's see where they finally spot the ball inside of the 25, it looks like. Well, that's the guy I go to, that Carter. He's a tremendous receiver. Same tailback action, gets good protection, and the, the coverage somewhere along the line is very, very soft here. As you see, the defenders are way off the ball. I think that was Doug Mallory, number eight. It was playing very soft on that side. There was no under coverage, and Tom Zach hit it for first down. Tom Zach, 10 of 14 for 131 yards. Now Carter goes in motion. They'll run by it. Into the wall, he comes free, and on the second effort, he's inside of the 15, and that catch of Lanise just gave the Buckeyes a tremendous lift. Really was. And that made up, of course, for that fumble on that punt. Here comes Byers. Now watch him bounce off of a tackler, slide, to, and Mallory misses him number eight there, and he finally is brought down. But that was great second effort on the part of Keith Byers. He's 12 for 51 now. Way below his average, of course. Eight minutes to go. Ohio State leading Michigan 7-6. Second down and one. In short yardage situation. The Wolverines have been very successful. Fake this time, and Tom Zach's got the ball. Mike, got the Zach first down as he gets close to the 11-yard line. Scott Zielinski leading the way with a block as he pulled out to break Tom Zach. This keep play fakes the ball. And of course, Byers draws some attention to himself, and Tom Zach keeps it and leans forward and gets the first down. Gotta like Zielinski coming around. Did a great job. Offensive line. Those guys will do it down there for you. Ball's on the 11-yard line. Zielinski's one of the few guys on this team that's not from the state of Ohio. It's only about five of them starting out of the 22. 
Carter in motion. Tom Zach's got it again inside the 10 yard line. Tim Anderson, the inside linebacker, rode him down. Second down and about eight yards to go. Ohio State can get a first down down by the one yard line and still not score a touchdown. Lanise bringing the plays in. Sometimes Ohio State will just send Tom Zach a number like one, two, or something like that. He will look at a wristband where the plays are marked for him down there. That is to save time for Earl Bruce. He's got to go to either Carter or Lanise on this play. Sends Byers out over the middle, and he's got Vic Keith Byers down at the two-yard line. Mike Mallory. Aaron, the Wolverines were thinking exactly what you were, Lanise or Carter, and, of course, that makes Byers even more dangerous. They put that, what they wind up is putting the fourth receiver into the pattern after faking to him right here. They fake the ball to Byers, and he slips right through the line. No one's covering him here. They're double up on the wide side. There's Mallory, number 42, that comes up and makes the play, but they're down to the two-yard line. Great play. This is an excellent drive by Ohio State with a key play, as you have pointed out, Brent, that catch by Lanise on third down and long yardage. Timeout, and Tom Zeck wants to huddle up with Earl Bruce, who takes the calls from Mason in the press box, and we'll be right back to Columbus. Ladies and gentlemen, and students. Gary Moeller, the defensive coordinator of Michigan. He has the entire defensive unit over at the Michigan sideline going through the goal line defense with them now, reminding them of their various keys, how they can always power that big fella Byers. I suppose surprise you with a fullback, although it's not likely that Earl Bruce will do that. Tom Zach has been keeping the ball more than normal on the option. And of course, remember, Mike broke that leg in spring practice, that right leg in two places. And they have been protecting him by not having him on the option this year. But here today, it's too important. Here it is now, third and short, and there's Byers dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State, and they're moving close to the Rose Bowl. performance 21 touchdowns slowed by an injured ankle then banged on all game long but yet he's got the two most important runs of the game for Ohio State the two touchdown runs as the Buckeyes move 55 yards in 10 plays and let me tell you the big one was Mike Lanise with that sensational reception Spangler's extra point cuts the uprights and with six minutes and eight seconds to go the Buckeyes are a whole lot closer to California than they was were there, a short time ago. Is there any question of doubt whether or not he's going to take this ball in the end zone? Look at that. I mean, he really is not going to be denied on that effort. Byers, again, from another angle. Watch him coming at you. Right there. Now he takes off, protects the ball, uses his left arm, and we'll be right back after this message. Sat down with mom, talk to dad, can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon, because you really care. The services can help you so you not only get better, you really grow. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. They'll take you, train you, show you. Byers did the rest. You can see the determination here as he dives. Watch him use his left arm here to break the fall so that he doesn't fumble the ball. He crosses the line. The second touchdown of the day. He's had some kind of a year, although he has been stopped by his standards by carrying the ball 22 times today for 53 yards, way below his average. But the most important thing, he's got the two touchdowns in the game. 6-0-8, and it's 14-6. Spangler to kick it off for the Buckeyes. Jamie Morris set deep. He'll let this one go into the end zone and bounce out. And Chris Zerbrug and the Wolverines will put it in play at the 20-yard line. Zerbrug, 21 of 
30 against Purdue and today he is 13 of 22 for 140 yards and of course he threw that critical interception critical now when we look at the scoreboard and think about what has transpired here and the Buckeyes will be thinking pass by Zerbrug all the way here Bean and Mark Ray come to the right side they send Mark Ray in motion and White will go across the field and take him Zerbrug rolls with time it's his tight end Nelson first down fumble Ohio State's ball William White picks up the bouncy football. Let's take another look here and see whether or not he hit the ground. I could not tell from this vantage point, though we can't see from that view. Let's see if we can take a whole look at it now. Zerbrug does throw a good ball. Let's see whether or not the ball comes out before he hits the ground. Okay, there's a completion to Nelson. Boy, that's close. That is close. I thought it was a fumble error. I thought the ball was being jarred loose by a hand there on the right side as he was going down. Well, Pepper so Johnson and Chris Spielman were helping out on the tackle. So did all the officials. So <laughs> it looked close from this vantage point. Now the Bucks will try to run that clock down at 5.58. Byers with a huge hole in the middle. Cuts over to the right. Inside the 25. 20 and out of bounds. In California, here we come. For Mr. Byers, who's getting stronger here as this game wears on. Well, there's a big hole here. This is the biggest hole he has seen all afternoon. As you see the trap and look at him read the daylight. Then you see Ivan Hicks, number 17, try to chase him down. Finally forces him out of the bounds right there. But not until he's picked up good yardage down inside that 20. Lanise goes in motion behind Tomzak. Byers gets inside the 15-yard line. Sensich wrestles him down. 5.40 on the clock. Also, uh, when Michigan had that ball, if they'd scored the touchdown and had gone for the two points and made it a tie game, it still not would have influenced or lost the Rose Bowl for uh, Ohio State because they would have shared the title with Iowa but the fact that they beat Iowa they still would go to the Rose Bowl. And this has been the toughest season yet for Bo Schenbecker at Michigan. Now the penalty marker comes down. Earl Bruce and the Buckeyes of Ohio State oh, in command and if Bruce wins this he would hold a 4-2 edge on Schimbeckler since he replaced Woody Hayes as coach of the Buckeyes. It'll also mark the second time that Bruce has taken the Buckeyes to Pasadena. Offense. And also the winningest coach in the last five years in the Big Ten. And probably the most criticized along the way. I might add. Let's go, Watts, let's go! Here's Woolridge, he's replaced by him. breaks up the middle inside the five-yard line. And the Buckeyes are going to get one more, it looks like. It appears the resolve of the Wolverines has diminished some. Watch here from the end zone shot. Woolridge, oh, look at that hole. Those last two holes have been the two biggest holes that we have seen on the part of Ohio State in the entire game. They have to point out that offensive line again. Mark Karowitz over there at right tackle. Scott Zelinsky at right guard. Bob Maggs, who's done a great job at center. There's the man who coaches him right there, Coach Miles. Jim Lachey, Rory Graves, they're over on the left side. And they're doing a job right now. And Era, I think you're right. It might, it might have been a leg injury. The way he came down on that after he slammed inside the five yard line. He of course is the tailback behind Byers on this Ohio State team. He's about to be helped out. 
Here's the end of that play. Let's see if we can see where the injury occurs. He tripped up. Well, you can't tell. They really can't. I want to remind everybody, of course, that as soon as this game is over, we're going to be going out to the West Coast. Jerry Bender and Pat Hayden are out there. USC against UCLA and those Trojans last Saturday on CBS. It was Fred Crutcher with this touchdown against the number one team in the country at the time, the Washington Huskies, that sent the Trojans back into the Rose Bowl, where it appears now as though they will be taking on the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And, of course, you'll get a preview of USC next right here on CBS. And you'll be thinking as you watch Jack Del Rio what kind of an afternoon he'll have against the likes of Keith Byers, who just has scored his third touchdown. And you can start the engines, folks. Here come the Buckeyes to California. And you can write him down right now as the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy next year. And his strongest competition, I think, is going to come from that Brigham Young quarterback, Robbie Bosco. The attempt for the extra point, David Ettner will serve. Mike Fleming will fall in. And I've just heard a vote from our producer, Rick Sharp, for Bernie Kosar of Miami. Why not? Sounds like a great race to me. All good candidates. We'll see Kosar next Friday here on CBS against this year's winner, if I can give him the trophy prematurely, <laughs> Doug Flutie, who's had a marvelous year. And if you haven't seen him, be with us Friday afternoon. We'll be right back. To photograph the Earth's resources from the air, they say you need a camera that can see through clouds. For a chance. Can't be done. Well, Florida is one of the better teams. The LSU being tied by Mississippi State. First quarter. And here it is, Michigan at the 20 yard line. Zerbrook back to put it up under pressure, and he will not get the ball away. Fumble, but they're going to call it down right there at the four yard line. Ooh, the floodgates are opening now in Columbus. Well, the game was, was without question won by this Ohio State team, but it did not come easy. Of course, here's the defense putting pressure on. Ohio State's defense is much improved in the last three games. And they, I think they did an outstanding job this afternoon. Here they are really putting the heat on Zerbrug. He called him down, but that looked like that ball was coming out to me. Era Bo Schembechler is about to lose for the fifth time this season. Washington beat him, of course, before the conference action. Heated on, and then Michigan State defeated him. Iowa beat him 26 to nothing. Purdue got him 31-29. Now Ohio State's about to do a number on him with a loose ball inside the five-yard line. Well, they've just fallen apart. Here's a little more action from around the country in some other games. Boston College now. Beginning to pull away from Syracuse, and again we'll have BC and Miami next Friday afternoon on CBS. West Virginia, Temple, very close. They've had a good year at Temple. Penn over Cornell, and Penn, of course, the Ivy League champion. Your view of the horseshoe, and a record crowd in excess of 90,000. Zerbrug from the end zone, out of bounds. And this will bring up about a fourth and 27 yard situation for Michigan at 306. And Robbins will come in here and punt. This is the, well, as you see, Harvard is leading Yale in the third quarter. I was going to say that this is the first time in 16 years that Bo Schembechler has lost five games. Robbins back at the end zone to punt for Michigan. Ohio State will just let this one roll dead near midfield. And it takes a bounce from Michigan. Going to go down inside the 30 yard line, 254, and Bruce will send the offense out now to bring the clock down against Schimbeckler in Michigan. 
That is a 71-yard punt with that bounce. Nobody back to field it. Well, Bo and Michigan gave him a battle. I'll say that. They hanging in there until he, they finally wore down. And Ohio State put the scores on the board, and that was the key thing. The third quarter belonged to the Wolverines, but they only got three points out of that. And the fourth quarter just turned completely around. Ohio State made all the yardage. They also got the ball into the end zone, and that's what it's all about. Strains of California, here we come. The Ohio State band. I'm rather surprised that Byers is out there pounding into that line. I guess with the loss of Woolridge, they are forced to keep him out there right now. And there's our Chevrolet MVP. We're going to pick Brad Cochran, who did a great job in that secondary for Michigan, and Mike Lanise of Ohio State. And it was simply one play that got him that honor for us. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. When it was 7-6, it was Lanise who made a great catch to keep a drive going on a third down. Ohio State then moved in for its second touchdown. And it seemed to pick up the team and the crowd when he grabbed that pass, Sarah. It was a pivotal play in this football game, unquestionably, Brent. Now there is the mascot of the Buckeyes. Brutus is his name. And the big story in Columbus about 36 hours ago was who stole Brutus's head out of the back seat of the student's car. They even offered a $1,000 reward. <laughs> and someone suspected it was Michigan, but they found the head in the garbage can here in Columbus someplace, and all was well for Brutus here this afternoon. Final minute and a half now in Columbus, Ohio. Is just adding more yardage to his total. It's out beyond the 40 yard line. UCLA and USC still to come your way here this afternoon. That'll have all the scores for you still on games that are in progress. Please do not go on the playing field. The band will be performing. Ivan Hicks and thanks to the crew that brought everyone this game this afternoon. They have done their usual outstanding job. The executive producer of college sports is Kevin O'Malley. Produced by Rick Sharp. Directed by Larry Cavalina. Our associate producer is Bob Rowe. And our associate director is Rich Nelson. Lou Scanna, he's the field technical manager. And of course, they are supported by this great cast. As I told you a short time ago, Pat is coming along with the score when we finish. And then you will see the other team in the Rose Bowl, USC against UCLA. How about a salute to that guy right there, Earl Bruce and his coaching staff are doing an outstanding job winning the Big Ten Conference and taking this team to the Rose Bowl for the second time in his five years here. He's got to be real proud of this ball club. They, they had the lead. They lost it. They came back again, but they didn't let it go this time. You see the disappointment on the other sideline, including the cheerleaders. Well, we give Ohio State the football triumph. What do you say, Arrow? We give the Michigan band at least a draw with Ohio State. <laughs> Both great. Let's put it that way. Oh, huh? I love those two bands. I'll tell you, you couldn't find better bands any place in the country than the we had here this afternoon. They were great. Should be a good Rose Bowl game. You know that era, Ohio State and USC. That'll be a good matchup out there. Well, you've seen that matchup before. 
Southern California has been the surprise team after a disappointing year last year. They've come back and had a great season. Of course, they're going to have an opportunity to play their cross-town rival, UCLA, here in the, right as we follow this game coming up next. Well, we're going to see Pat O'Brien and Steve Davis with some scores. But right after that, you'll see a great ball game out in Los Angeles. You know, one thing about Earl is talking to Mike Tomczak out at the Galbraith Farm last night. They have the traditional press dinner out there, part of the Ohio State-Michigan game. Earl was up there, and I said to you afterwards, you know, it's kind of unusual, the defense of Tomczak. And, and perhaps it is true, Era, that with that broken leg, they took a lot of things away from Tomczak this year until this game, such as the option play. I felt he was a better-looking quarterback here this afternoon than I've seen him throughout much of the season. I thought he threw the ball better ran with confidence and uh, did a lot of good things out there. You got to keep in mind too coming into this ball game this was an explosive Ohio State offensive football team averaging over 450 yards a game and 35 points a game so this is even without Tom Zach running the option play as he had right now trying to fake the pullback they still put a lot of points on the board. This is a great offensive team. The defense did not match it in the early going but in the last three ball games I think they're a much improved team. Uh, from the Wisconsin game that we did three weeks ago where Wisconsin ran up 400 and some odd yards against them but they have played exceptionally well the last three contests. Exactly. They hammered Indiana 50 to 7 gave the Hoosiers just one touchdown held Northwestern to a field goal beat them 52 to 3 and now they're going to beat Michigan 21 to 6 so that's one touchdown in the last three weeks that the Ohio State defense and you can see the crowd here in Columbus massing to run on the field down to my left. They have warned them to stay off because the band is due to perform. I'm not sure that the band is going to make it, folks. <laughs> There's going to be some traffic on that field. Just with or without the announcement. There's just a few Ohio troopers there protecting the goalposts at both ends. <laughs> Hold your fourth man. Don't give any ground down there. Bo is not going to be happy about a couple of moments in this game. There's a couple he would love to have over. One, that discretionary timeout. If that had been granted Zerbrug, who knows if they get a touchdown in that situation rather than kicking a second field goal, but of course ifs, right? Earl Bruce has gone down to tell the students and the spectators down in that corner to stay back and, and let them finish the game. And again, he's motioning to get them back off to the side. And they're surging onto the field. He can't keep them back off of there. Now we're going to have a celebration here in Columbus and I hope it's a joyous one and there's not any destruction like they experienced up in Detroit after the World Series triumph. That's kind of ridiculous. That's good time to enjoy. Huh? Here's a punt by Tupa. Johnson. Stops the clock with 30 seconds to go. Tupa's punt is returned by that Tupa's got a great future here at Ohio State. As I told you, he was a high school quarterback and a good one, and the coaches are going to take a look at him at that position next year. You know, he's not a little fella either. Six foot five, 205 pounds, great leverage on the ball, and they said that he has some potential to be the quarterback. So the Ohio State Buckeyes go to the Rose Bowl, and you know, Eric, we have to feel a little bit for a friend of ours, Hayden Fry. He let this one get away from him, but they suffered so doggone many injuries out there at Iowa when they lost a great running back, Ronnie Harmon, and then it came right down to that two-point conversion, and they just came up a few inches short. Here's Zerbrug over the middle. Hits his big tight end, Sim Nelson. The pass is complete to number 90. And that'll be the last play unless they get 16 seconds left. Tackle by Gary Alders at number 90. The celebration is underway in Columbus. The Buckeyes are going to the Rose Bowl. are headed 
to their locker room here at Ohio Stadium. Chris Carter and Bo Schembechler will lead the Wolverines into their locker room, and this has been the toughest season for Bo at Michigan. Yeah, it's not often. As a matter of fact, the first time, as you mentioned, and as I mentioned previously, that this man has lost five games. That's an incredible record. He's been a real winner, but he's had a tough time. Here comes the Buckeyes in the jubilant locker room, and as you see, Bo Schembechler walking off the field. 